The following is a production of CUTV Sports. the Morrow Fieldhouse on the campus of Slippery Rock University. We have a PSAC West matchup today between the Cal U Vulcans and the Rock of Slippery Rock. And we welcome to you to broadcast, everybody. My name is Matthew Hagee. Alongside of me is my partner, Zach Lamar. Zach, the Vulcans got a huge win on Wednesday. Yeah, over a Gannon team that was tied for first in the PSAC West. They ended up winning 62-59. to They were tied at halftime, down by as many as six in the game, you see right here, Alonzo Murphy, 12 and 12, a double-double. I believe that's his third or fourth on the year, but he had a first half that he didn't really have a lot of production, came out, and it was the Alonzo Murphy versus the World Show. Really did a good job of propelling his team to victory after an emotional letdown against Seton Hill after coming off an IUP upset as well. Indeed, he is a complete, completely different player in the second half. As for The Rock, it's not just what happened Wednesday, but the last two games, really two heartbreaking, gut-wrenching losses to IUP, but they battled for first, but then last Wednesday, they got upset by Clarion. Yeah, and Clarion is definitely the surprising one. IUP's a good team, especially at home, as you see right here, 87-86, to and that was in overtime. Clarion actually had a chance to win it in regulation as well. Maurice Lewis-Briggs had 27 points to Barry Perry, 11 rebounds. So Slipper Rock can come in here at home, maybe a little bit angry. You want to see if that anger might get a little overzealous, though, in this game. We'll see what happens. And the last time these two teams faced was in on November 23rd, where Slippery Rock came to the Convocation Center on a Saturday afternoon. And they, well, I mean, they completely dominated. Yeah, and they did. And California only had one win coming into that game. And they had just lost to Gannon on that Wednesday night. And that was Gannon's first game of the year. So they were starting conference play out in a sour note, ended up, Winning against Edinburgh a couple games later, but now they're coming in here four and five in conference, have a chance to get the 500. Right now they're sixth place in the division. They would be in the playoffs if they started today. It would be a big game if they come in here and win at the Morrow Fieldhouse. Zach, we're going to look at our players to watch today for Cal U. You already we already mentioned them, Alonzo Murphy. And Alonzo Murphy, you see right here, this is all in the Gannon game. That might be the first dunk any Cal player has had that we've been able to witness all season, but. The rebounds, especially in the offensive end, are where he made his mark, being able to get that uh, statistic up in his total range, uh, helping his team to victory. A couple big blocks as well near the end against Rafael Thomas Edwards. And then for Slipperick, Maurice Lewis Briggs, he only had six points against California when they first played in November, but he has had 29 and 27 in the last two games against Clarion and the IUP. So it's going to be interesting to watch. California shut him down the last time. Can they do it again? Or will he continue to replicate his success he's had, had for the past week or so? He's been one of the hottest players in the PSAC West. And when we come back for, for our broadcast, tip-off will be next in an exciting rivalry matchup. Can the Vulcans pull another road upset? Stay tuned. Need to know what's happening in your area? CUTV News Center brings you your best local news. Events on and around campus. Local weather. Vulcan sports coverage. CUTV News Center, live Thursdays at 5.
Cal U Vulcans Basketball is presented by First Niagara Bank JD Waterproofing Lee Supply Company The Physical Therapy Institute Trip Total Media and the UPMC Health Plan. And Zach, we're gonna, as we get ready to the starting lineups to be introduced here, we're gonna first take a look at the tail of the tape. Yeah, the tail of the tape brought to you by JD Waterproofing. Slipper Rock across the board, except for a free throw percentage and steals and turnovers, really has an advantage. Scoring is where they really make their mark. And California, if they wanna come away with the victory today, they gotta come away with scoring and the rebounds. They've had a couple big upsets the last week or so. They might be able to score another one here as we get the starting lineups announced in front of us. We're going to get that in a moment. And a stat the, as the starting lineups are being introduced here, a stat to, to realize here, Cal has not won in the Morrow Fieldhouse since February of 2010, and they've not defeated Slippery Rock since February 2011. And we will take a look at the starting lineup. First for Slippery Rock, it's changed a little bit there. We'll see Josh Martin, Maurice Lewis breaks our player to watch, but one of the best players for the PSA, in the PSAC the past couple weeks, uh, Max Brin. Sophomore from Oil City. And then Tamari Perry, 24, from Cambridge, uh, from Cambridge, Maryland. And rounding out the starting lineup today will be Kelvin Dixon, number 40. He had a big time game against Cal U back in November. And we actually have one change to that as I was watching the starting lineups be announced. Josh Martin not starting. As we get to Cal, we have Dombrowski, Jake Jakubik, Drew Cook, Chris Williams, the lone senior on this team. And of course, Alonzo Murphy, who just came off a double-double for the Vulcans. Uh, they're starting live the same. The only one we had to change is Sipperak Josh Martin not starting in this game. We'll have to see if he's coming off the bench in this one. We have Saquon Davis in the starting lineup instead. And Josh Martin had 20 points against Cal U back in November here. As we're getting ready to hype up here, you see the, both head coaches there. Bill Brown, one of the one legendary coaches here. As we'll get ready for tip-off here today. It will be... It's actually going to be Lewis Briggs against Alonzo Murphy. And these players are both big. Lewis Briggs in 6'8", Alonzo Murphy 6'8". Murphy and Briggs, we are underway as Cal will control the opening tip-off. And that's a great start for California. Slipper Dog likes to get off to a fast start. California can control that pace. They might have a chance to get out to an early lead. Dombrowski hands it over to Jackie Beck. Jackie Beck to Murphy. Murphy and Briggs. It's actually the match will Murphy with a right hand hook and it goes out of in rebound by number 24 Tabari Perry for the Rock. And that's a shot that Murphy likes to go to. That one just rimmed out and that would have been an easy two points for the Vulcans but not able to go in. Here's Briggs on, on Murphy and he gets it to go and there's Maurice Lewis Briggs picking up right where he left off. And our player to watch is going to be whether he gets shut down by the Vulcans defense down low with Murphy or if he goes out and scores 20 again. It's going to be a complete struggle between Murphy and Briggs the whole game as we see Jackie back hand it off to Drew Cook. Cook over to Dombrowski at the top of the circle and goes inside to Murphy. Murphy, nice pass to Williams, over to Dombrowski. Dombrowski over to Williams. Williams thought about a three, pulls up, works inside. Chris Williams hands it off to Cook. Cook over to Dombrowski. Dombrowski wants a three and it goes off the rim. Rebound, and that's Perry again as he loses the ball. Murphy slaps it out of bounds and Slipper Rock will get the ball. But you like the hustle from Alonzo Murphy right there, trying to fight for the rebound. He realizes he's going to have a tough time down low because he has two guys that are 6'8 on him, Tabari Perry and Maurice Lewis Briggs. He's going to have to fight for every rebound he's going to get today. The Vulcans are definitely outsized against Slippery Rock, but they've been outsized against Gannon on Wednesday, and they, they made quick work of that as we see Tabari Perry hand it off to Max Rind. To Perry for the top of the circle for a three, and it goes off the rim and off the back of the board, and Jackie Beck will control the rebound. And a long shot right there from Perry, and Perry can hit the three sometimes, but he's a low score, high rebound total kind of guy. Williams off to Dombrowski. Dombrowski's hit some few, huge threes in the past couple games for the Vulcans. See, Jackie back over to Drew Cook. Cook works around Kelvin Dixon. Cook to Dabrowski. Dabrowski inside of Wren. Dabrowski looks inside, puts up a hook, and it goes off the board. Rebound! It goes out of bounds, and it was maintained possession there as the ball went out on Tabari Perry. And that one right there, that's two shots that have gone in for the Vulcans and just spun out with 18.05 left. And it's going to be that kind of day on the ram. California's really going to have to work for their shots to fall. That's going to see. Max Rend come out and Anthony Butler, the junior, number 23. Jake Jackiebeck puts up a three and it goes off the rim. Another rim shot and rebound by Briggs. 
But you have to anticipate, though, if they keep hitting the rim, eventually they're going to start falling. Saquon Davis, he's fast. Works inside on Jackie back. Goes like, passes it over to, to uh, that is Perry. Perry, they're stolen away by Drew Cook. Here comes Drew Cook. He's got Jackie back with him. Jackie back goes inside, and it goes off the rim, but it will call a foul. Oh, my goodness, how did that not go in? Yeah, that, oh, that was a spectacular shot that did not go in. That foul going to be on Maurice Lewis Briggs. His first we'll see right here as we have camera three. Allison Steinhauser right below it. And like I said, if the rim's not going to favor you, you're going to have to keep working. But if they keep hitting the shots close, eventually they're going to start falling. Jackie Bick going to the line, a 76% free throw shooter. Jake Jackie Beck, the sensational sophomore from uh, Struthers, Ohio. And he'll miss the first free throw as the Balkans will continue to stay off the board here. And even one right here will help you out because Slippery Rock, like I said, they like to start fast, get out to a big lead, and then make you work to come back. It's only 2 nothing right now, so every point helps. They got out to a big start at Convocation Center, and Jackie back with a rare two misses. And while he was shooting the free throws, Eric Raleigh will see his first action of the game as Briggs checked out as the ball. So we get a no stoppage beat. here. It's and the ref's interesting stop here. It's not it's a... Shot, I believe it was a shot clock file. I didn't see the shot clock start. Yeah, we will get. And the shot clock is running now at 30 seconds for Slippery Rock. Nonetheless, Slippery Rock will take over as Anthony Butler hands off the parry. Back to Butler. Over to Saquon Davis. Saquon Davis wants a three. He's got a three. Saquon Davis with a three, and it's now 5 nothing. Slippery Rock. And I kept my eye on Saquon Davis the entire possession. He was open the entire possession. No one picked him up. Dombrowski came over just a little too late, and he hit the open three. I've Seem to think he's the one of the fastest guys on the court. We see Jackie back over to Drew Cook. Cook works inside over Raleigh. He's got it to Murphy. Murphy puts it up and puts it in. Alonzo Murphy gets the Vulcans Alonzo on the board. Murphy. And that's the kind of shot Alonzo Murphy likes. Going up right to the basket, putting it off the top of the corner and in. He tried the hook before. That one didn't work, but he gets his first two there. Saquon Davis hands it over to Perry. Perry working on Williams. Hands it off to Butler. And Butler will... Work on Drew Cook, reset the offense, hand it off to, uh, that is Perry. Perry, hands it off to Davis. Davis, working inside, loses the ball for a second, gets it back. And it would get called for a double dribble and a turnover for the slip for the Rock. That will be their first turnover of the game, and the Vulcans will get the ball back here. Yeah, I think Davis thought that the ball might have been tipped, which would allow him to start his dribble back again, but he actually just lost it off himself, so that's why they're going to call the double dribble. Get the first turnover there as Dombrowski is going to inbound it and try and cut this deficit from three to possibly as low as a tie right here. Jake Jackie back. We'll take it over for the Vulcans. 16.30 left here in the first half as Dombrowski hands it off to Drew Cook. Cook waits, fires over to Drake Jackie back. Jackie back working on Davis, hands it off to Cook. Here comes Alonzo Murphy working inside on Raleigh. Murphy gets another basket to go. Alonzo Murphy's got all four points for the Vulcans. And his strength right there helped him in, in that endeavor right there. I believe that was Raleigh guarding him. And Raleigh is a 6'8 forward as well, but not as big as Alonzo Murphy. And uh, His weight-wise uh, is what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah, no, I know exactly. What he, is Alonzo Murphy just used his muscle to gain in there. His strength has been huge. He's one of the strongest guys on the team as we see. Juan Davis handed off inside to Raleigh. Raleigh misses a, a jumper, and that ball is a loose scramble, and the Vulcans will get it back. That's Dombrowski on the rebound. The Vulcans can take their first lead here if they make a basket. Now the Vulcans. Chris Williams. Over to Dombrowski. Back to Jackie. Back to reset the offense. Back to Drew Cook. Cook over to Murphy. Over to Williams. Williams. Hands it off to Jackie Beck. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Jackie Beck. Hands it off to Williams. Back to Murphy inside. Murphy's got two on him. Murphy. Can he get another one? He goes off the rim and he rebounds by the, to the Rock. Here comes Saquon Davis. Over to, that was a big there by Kelvin Dixon and the Vulcans with the ball back. I lost track there. It looked like Raleigh was in there with him. As we see, Drew Cook working inside and lose the ball. And I believe Slippery Rock will get the ball back as the ball. <laughs> as we actually saw the ball come out towards us and Matt, we tried to get it there. As you actually lost your headphone jack out of there for a moment. You're back with us now, but our attempt to get that one did not work. We are at our media timeout with 15.01, though. We're going to look at some of our replays. We see Lewis Briggs right here, his first basket of the game. That is his only basket of the game, the other coming from Saquon Davis. And we actually get that three right here from Saquon Davis. As like I said, he was open the entire possession. No one picked him up. Dombrowski should have done it, but he didn't go out. And then Alonzo Murphy, all four points for the Vulcans. 
working down low using his strength and also his post moves to work around Dixon and Raleigh and Briggs to get his points. Big, big performance so far by Alonzo Murphy, our player to watch. We'll take a look at our team leaders here. And scoring Tynell Fortune, 11.3. He's still the scoring leader, but there's a lot of players behind him. Only about half a point or so. Now you have Armin Marks, Alonzo Murphy, Jack Ubet, Chris Williams. And in rebounds, though, Alonzo Murphy is the clear leader there in rebounds with 6.3. The next closest, I believe, is Armin Marks with 4.8. Chris Williams actually has 4.8 as well. Assists, Jake Jackson has 40. And Chris Williams, the leading uh, turnover man for the Vulcans. But when we look at slippery right, Maurice Lewis breaks 17.1, one of the top scorers in the PSAC. Tabari Perry, I think eighth in the PSAC West in rebounds at 7.9. And then Josh Martin, 77 assists, 19 steals, but we haven't seen him yet today. It remains a question whether we will see him or not. I don't see a number one on the bench, so Josh Martin looks like he might be out for this game. And that's huge because he had, twice said in the earlier in the broadcast, Josh Martin had 20 points against the Vulcans at the Convocation Center in November here. As we see Tynell Fortune will get his first action of the game as Saquon Davis will work on him. Saquon Davis, speed against speed, puts up a shot, and he will draw a foul. And nice. that will be on Fortune. And that is going to be on Fortune. That's the first team foul for the Vulcans. The Fortune got into a little bit of foul trouble last game as well. As you see right there, Jordan Grady, who just entered into the game, tried to clean that one up, but... Davis will go to the free throw line where he is an 68% free throw shooter. Saquon Davis, one of the senior leaders for the for the Rock as he hits his first free throw to make it a 6-4 game here with 14.50 left here in the first half. Saquon Davis, we've been watching him for the past couple years against the Vulcans in every game. He had eight points against the uh, Vulcans last uh, November and he hits a second free throw here to give the, the Rock a 7-4 lead here. And he already has five in this game, so we'll have to watch the production from Davis. He's been a Vulcan killer all his career with the Rock. Chris Williams hands it off to Murphy. Murphy hands it off to Drew Cook, and it's stolen away. That is by Butler. Butler, he's got Jordan Grady with him, but he'll take it himself and put it in. It's now a 9-4 lead for the Rock. And that's an area where California has to make sure they're clean at is the turnovers, make sure they don't lose any easy passes or hit any off any foot. They want to have some possessions in this game. And Murphy slips, and it'll be a costly turnover for the Rock there. Tough break for the Vulcans. And just like I said, you can't have any turnovers in this game. Alonzo Murphy, they're trying to work to him, knowing that he's a big presence for this team, something they've not had in the past few years, but it's just not working yet. They're, the defense for Slipper Rock is very suffocating so far. And they knew going into the game that Murphy was the key focal point. And, you know, the Rock's got some speed as we see. Grady go inside, Grady puts up a shot and gets it to go. Jordan Grady with, with two points, it's now an 11-4 Rock lead. And this is where California, they need to make a basket here. They don't want this lead to extend past seven. They gotta keep it close in this game if they wanna win. Murphy over to Cook. Drew Cook, hands it off to Marks. Marks, first action for working on Butler. Goes inside, get, get it to go. Rebound by Butler, here come the Rock. Butler, working inside on Murphy, Butler gets, it up and he draws the foul, misses the shot, but he will get uh, two two shots at the free throw strike. We'll see who the foul is going to be on, and that's going to be on Tynell Fortune. That's his second. And we have 13:36 left in the first half, and I believe California took a timeout actually. So California, they're trying to slow down Slippery Rock's pace. And Slippery Rock is such a fast team. You have to make sure they slow down. They get into a rhythm. They're unbeatable, especially at home. And Slippery Rock with that speed they have, we see players like Squan Davis, the Vulcans need it. players like Fortune to match them. As we'll take a look at the standings here. And we do look at the standings right now. Slippery Rock and Gannon were tied for first with Mercerus and Indiana, but both of them lost once tonight to Kyle and Clarion in California, holding the sixth spot in the playoffs right now. But Pitt Johnstown holds the tiebreaker with California, as well as Seton Hill does too. So uh, uh, both of those teams have an advantage over California. California really has to start building some wins if they want to get into the uh, postseason tournament for the PSAC. The Vulcans coming up will have Mercyhurst on Wednesday. That game will also be broadcast on CUTV. They lost to Mercyhurst in December up at Mercyhurst in Erie. So they're going to have to start getting wins against teams they lost to at the first time here. As we will see Anthony Butler go to the free throw stripe for the first time today. Butler, a junior from Lorton, Virginia. He's a transfer from Garrett College and he'll make his first free throw. And he is a 58% free throw shooter on the year for this team, and 
Um, Butler is actually the second transfer from Garrett College. Jordan Grady joined him as well. They're a year apart as Cook is going to come in for Tynell Fortune, but they might have that chemistry already from playing together at Garrett College as well. Indeed they do. Butler looking for his second free throw. Extend the lead to 13-14, and he, th excuse me, 13-4. to four. And so now the Vulcans will take over here. Two nice shots there by Anthony Butler. As we saw, Slippery Rock got out to a big lead in November. And they, they pretty much had the game over by halftime. Now the Vulcans, a different team, I think a better team. Let's see if they can cut into the lead. Yeah, back in that game in November, Vulcans were having some chemistry issues. And now you've had the same starting five for the past four or five games. You're starting to see the team bond together. That might help their chances. Jake Jackubeck goes up for three and misses. Rebound, big scram. And that is Kenny Smith trying to get it, but she, he couldn't hold on to it. Vulcans don't like the call, but the Rock will get the ball back. It's another turnover for the Vulcans. And that's a surprising call right there. We'll see if it actually did go off Kenny Smith as Jackie Bix three just hit off the rim again. We'll see right here. And as it looks like it actually went off the arm of a Slippery Rock player. That looks like it might have been Saquon Davis. Well, nonetheless, the Rock will take over, looking to extend their nine-point lead here as we just get under 13 minutes to go here in the first half. Davis. Working on Cook. Davis with that speed. Goes inside. Puts up a jumper. And he got it. Saquon Davis continues to dominate the Vulcans. It's 15 to 4. And that's seven points now for Saquon Davis. You take him out of the equation. Sibrock only has a four-point lead. Like I said, he's just been a Vulcan killer throughout his career. Armin Marks draws, does a nice job of drawing the foul on Cornelius Brown. That will be Brown's first of the game. A 6'9 center. He's big. And being 6'9 center, he I believe he is the tallest player on the team, and he is as Dombrowski comes back in the game. And something Dombrowski can do is he can drag out some go, uh, some forwards from down low and put them beyond the arc and open up uh, Kenny Smith and some other guys down low. Jackie back. Hands it off to Cook. Over to Marks. Marks wants a three. Goes off the rim. Rebound, and it's taken by Grady. In stride. Here comes Gr Excuse me, that was, Del that was Matei Deleniak in his first there. Both Grady and Deleniak with numbers there as the Vulcans will draw a foul here. And that's going to be on number 30, Cornelius Brown. That's his second foul in about 20 seconds. As I'm sure he's about to take a seat here as Maurice Lewis Briggs comes in. Max Ryan also comes in as Matei Delinek takes a seat and the Vulcans regain the possession. I haven't seen much of Briggs. He got that for the open the scoring here as we see Dombrowski hand it over to Marks. Marks tries to open up, gets it over to Brosky, over to Cook. Cook from the top right circle. He's got it, a big shot for Drew Cook. And it's a big three-pointer, and it's now a 15-7 lead for the Rock. And that basically almost cuts the lead somewhat in half almost. You got to get another two or three before you do that, but it's a good start right there. You're only down by eight. And California came back from down by double digits against Seton Hill as well. They can do this. This is going to take a lot of work. Briggs lost the ball, and it was a fight between Jackie Beck and Max Rin. But I believe the Rock will get the ball back as we'll have our second media timeout of the half so far. And we will take a break as well. With 11.43 left in the first half, the Rock lead the Vulcans 15-7. Stay tuned for more action. We have so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division II student athletes have led a 10-year initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Nearly $3 million have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. watching CUTV, California University Television. Back here at the Morrow Fieldhouse and where the Rock lead the Vulcans 15 to 7. And Zach, we're going to once again look at the PSAC West standings. Yeah, IUP and Mercier is tied at the top 7 and 2 overall. Indiana, those are their only two losses on the year. That was to, I believe, Gannon as well as California at home in the KCAC. But Mercyhurst comes to the Convocation Center on Wednesday night. That's going to be a big matchup 
in a game where California needs to start winning if they want to make the playoffs. You need to get revenge on these teams that they lost to, like Mercyhurst. Mercyhurst, IUP right now in first place. They have the tiebreaker over Mercyhurst over their win in Mercyhurst earlier this season. As we see Butler hand it back to Davis. Davis for three. Can he keep it alive? And it's off the board. Rebound by Perry. Perry back to Butler. And that's something you can't let the Rock do is get the offensive rebounds, get second possessions and second chances to get some more points and extend their lead. Perry hands it off to Grady. Grady to Davis to Grady. Over to Perry. Perry works inside, hands it off to Butler. Butler thought about it, pulls off. Hands it off to Davis. Back to Butler. Butler to De Davis. Davis. Four seconds on the shot clock. Butler with a shot and it goes off the board. Rebound by Butler. It's a fresh shot clock. And Slipper Rock using a lot of passing to help get open looks. Butler was open a couple times as California is working in the 2-3 zone, but that one is out of bounds off of Armin Marks. So Slipper Rock will re retain possession with 25 on the shot clock, 10.44 left. But Slipper Rock, they keep passing the ball around or all around the top of the arc as well, not even trying to really go down low. They get those big shots and extend their lead. And they're clean passes too, and that's just the mark of why Slippery Rock is contending for the PSAC West as we see Perry hand it over to Butler. Butler with a tough pass inside, I believe. It will be a, did that go off a foot? It's tough to see from our viewpoint here as we see there's the pass inside. Oh no, Briggs no, lost the ball. And Briggs did lose the ball, so we'll see. Slippery Rock's gonna maintain possession though, so not exactly what happened there, make sure, uh, make Slipper Rock maintain possession is Lewis Briggs clearly lost it out of bounds. This is Butler inside the Briggs. Briggs on Murphy. Briggs puts it up, can't get it to go. Rebound, and it'll be Vulcan's ball. Rock tried to, could not control the rebound. And Kelvin Dixon is coming up limping. He is a junior from Bronx, New York, went to JFK High School, a transfer from Iowa Western uh, Community College. We'll have to monitor his injury status. You might try and attack him in this possession, though, knowing he's a little gimpy. They got Dombrowski on him so far. He had 18 points against the Vulcans in November. We see Jackie Beck hand the ball over to Cook. Cook to Dombrowski. Over to Marks. Marks works inside to Murphy. He's got Briggs on him. Murphy works inside, but he get called for travel. An easy call there for the refs, and there will be another turnover for the Vulcans. Yeah, Murphy tried to hop towards the basket, but he took a little bit too many steps right there. I think he got away with two or three uh, free steps before they called the travel. So a good call right there, though. We can see it right in front of us as the Vulcans are attacking towards us. Saquon Davis over to Perry. Perry over to Butler to Davis. Davis thought about it. Dabrowski came in there. No foul called. Here comes Davis over to Perry. Perry wants a three. It goes off the rim. Rebound. And it's still a nice play by Dixon. And it's a big scrum for the ball. And it'll go out of bounds. And the Rock will keep it. Huge scrum there. And a smart play right there. I wasn't exactly sure who the player was. I think it was Dixon who did it, threw it off a Vulcan player, trying to get it out of bounds, but it actually kind of stayed in bounds a little bit, and Armin Marks, good hustle to try and get the ball and get a possession for his team. Marks brings a lot of energy off the bench as he had in this past month. So we see Saquon Davis over to Butler, back to Davis, over to Perry, quick passing. You see Butler, thought about a three, pulls up, hands it off to Perry. Perry inside, it's a ball, gets knocked away by Murphy. Here comes Drew Cook, and Cook gives it to Dombrowski to slow it down. Nice play by Murphy. And Drew Cook, that's where he thrives on the defensive end. He'll get a lot of steals in this game and try and help his team get some more possessions than they normally win, try and cut this deficit from eight. And it'll be a foul called inside there. It will be on the Vulcans. Oh, on Alonzo Murphy, who's working inside. There's a huge, the big physical battle underneath the boards there. Unfortunately, Murphy gets called for the foul, and I believe... That's actually his first. He will sit down, though. Kenny Smith will come in, I think. Bill Brown knows I need to save the guy that can I rely on um, down low in the post. He's my tallest player. I need him to work against these tall players for Slippery Rock and Lewis Briggs and Dixon and Raleigh. Briggs on Kenny Smith. Briggs, a great pressure by Kenny Smith. Puts up a shot, can't get it to go. Rebound, and it will be a foul on the Vulcans on Jake Jackie back. That will be his first. And we'll have to see exactly where Jackie Beck is. He's back here. Uh, not sure why he would have been called for foul there. Oh, right there uh, yeah. as he goes in against Perry. And that will be a shot put up by Briggs as the Rock will extend their lead here with 8.42 left here. It's a 10 point lead and the Vulcans are still in this, but you want to make sure you kind of keep it within the 10 to 12 range. If you're going to have a comeback, you need to make it a manageable comeback. 
The Vulcans have been a relatively second half team as Drew Cook works inside, can't get it to go. Huge scrum for the rebound, and if the Rock eventually comes with it. Perry gives it to Davis, back to Perry for the oh, and a slam! Oh, what a play by Perry! That was a miraculous play right there by Slippery Rock. Tabari Perry running with Saquon Davis. I thought Davis might have kept it himself, but goes for the alley-oop, and Perry using his six foot eight frame just put it down on the slam. Put that one on the highlight reel as we see Armand Marks lose ball there. And I believe Perry will get called for the foul, trying to get a reach in there on Marks. It's actually on number 40. That's Kelvin Dixon. That's his first. And Kelvin Dixon, he looks fine after being injured previously. As Marks is going to exit, Chris Williams is going to come into the game. And Jordan Grady will come in for Kelvin Dixon. And Fortune will check in for Drew Cook here. See, Tynell Fortune, has, we haven't seen a lot of him so far in this game. See what he can do here. And he has two fouls already, so you got to monitor his foul problem. If he gets a couple more fouls, we might not see him for the rest of the first half. Williams inbound pass to Smith. Smith on break. Smith puts up and hits off a shot, and it does not go. Big fight for the ball, and eventually Briggs got it. He's got Grady with him. He'll pull up and slow things down as he'll fire it back to Davis. Davis he loses the ball, and it's stolen away by Dombrowski. Gives it to Williams. Williams trying to corral it, and he will and slow things down. Nice play there by Fortune and Kenny Smith. Excuse me, Dombrowski. And the Vulcans wanted to run after they got that steal, but they just weren't able to because the pass to Williams was a little bit off. He wasn't able to ha uh, handle it correctly, but a good job of being the senior and reset the offense and slow it down. Jake Jackiebeck works inside, pulls up for a two, and he doesn't the good to go. Rebound by Perry. And stolen away by Fortune. And it'll be a foul called on Davis, I believe. Great play by Fortune. Great awareness. That is going to go on Saquon Davis. That's his first. We have another media timeout with 7.18 left. That's the fifth team foul for Slippery Rock. And that might help California if they can get to the free throw line, try and make some easy baskets at the Charity Stripe as well. Look at some replays. Jordan Grady right here, averaging about two points a game on the year. Gets two right there. And then Saquon Davis, he is just the fastest player on the court for either team right now, proving he can shoot from distance, go inside as well with a little teardrop. But Drew Cook getting a big three right there. And that's the last bucket that California made. And that came around the 10 minute mark. They have gone lapses of time without scoring. It's Abari Perry right there, the big slam dunk. As we're gonna look at the stats ranking, California uh, far and away um, from Slippery Rock, who's the eighth best scoring offense in the PSAC, about 74 points a game. California, 63. But defense, these teams are evenly matched. Uh, that's where both of these teams uh, thrive, excuse me. Uh, both averaging around 65 points, but scoring margin. Uh, Slipper Rock doesn't let their uh, opponent really score along with them. They get a lot more possessions off turnovers and steals. California, minus 1.9. They have to correct that if they want to keep getting more wins. And I think that's been one of the big differences so far and why that scoreboard reads 19 to seven now with 17, excuse me, 718 left here in the first. It's been, the, the Vulcans have been turning the ball over and the Rock has been executing, getting the ball on the fly, using that speed. And then we saw in that play there, Saquon Davis had Perry with them. Both of them just flew down the court and set Perry up for uh, alley-oop slam. We're going to get back to action. Chris Williams is going to inbound it to the Vulcans. Williams. And it's knocked away by Briggs. Big fight for the ball, but eventually Williams gives it back to Jackie Beck. That was an ill-advised pass right there from Williams. He tried to go to Murphy. Had Fortune wide open right beside him. Did not go to Fortune, though. Jackie Beck pulls up for a three, and it goes off the board. Rebound Dombrowski, and he loses it. As the ball will land over next to my partner, Zach Lamar. No. <laughs> that was not a monster. It was our star Mike with the bounce there. Very, uh... <laughs> We can hear it again as I threw a wire back up there as it fell off. Kind of a weird sound in our headset going on right now. <laughs> and it, nonetheless, Jake Jackiebeck will hand the ball off to Fortune. Fortune hands it off to Dombrowski. Back to Fortune. Fortune redirecting the offense here as he hands it off to Jackiebeck. Jackiebeck still not on the board yet. Dombrowski hands it off to Williams. Williams inside the Murphy. Murphy. He's got four points so far, four of the seven. Here comes Murphy. He's got Briggs on him, and he'll get called for a foul. And That's Briggs. Look, Briggs may have taken an elbow to the face there. He's still on the floor, and if he's hurt, that's a – oh, yeah, right Ooh, there. You see right there the right elbow goes into Briggs' face, and he's holding his nose, mouth area. He looks to be fine. I don't see any blood, really. He just might be in a little bit of pain. might have a 
Bruce kind of there showing in the morning, a little shiner. Barrett As he gets up, up, he's very staying mad, but he's staying in the game. That's the fifth team foul. That's Murphy's second foul of the game. He matches Tynell Fortune with two fouls for the Vulcans. Jackie Pick also has one. I'm interested to see how Briggs plays this next possession here. He is not happy, and he's actually going to check out of the game for Eric Raleigh. He wanted to stay in, but, you know, after a shot like that, that was pretty a rough shot. Just give him some time, get the trainer to look at him a little bit, and get him, try to get him back in the game there. Juan Davis takes it across court for the Rock here. It's 6.29 left here in the first half. Rock leads 19-7. to Davis taking his time, working inside on Fortune, pulls up for a jumper, no good. Rebound, Kenny Smith. And that's an area where the Vulcans have started to struggle. The tall players are still bright, making it hard to get some rebounds on the defensive and offensive end. If they want to have a chance to come back in this one, they gotta pick up the boards off the glass. And the Vulcans struggling with that size advantage that the Rock has. And Fortune goes inside, makes a nice play, and draws the foul. I believe he got Saquon Davis on it. And that will be Davis's second. We'll have to see, I believe this is going to be, <coughs> excuse me, a shooting foul. And Tynell Fortune, an 83% free throw shooter, the best on the team. Uh, maybe get two free points here. That's the sixth team foul on Slipper Rack. So one more will send Kyle to the line for a bonus. Fortune with his first shot, and it goes through. And that'll be the first, first points in a while for the Vulcans uh, ever since that uh, uh, three-pointer from Drew Cook way back when. But like I said, the Vulcans are hitting the basket. It's just not going in. It's hitting off the side of the rim as Fortune makes his second. But eventually, those shots are going to start falling. And if California can improve on the defensive end, they're going to have a great chance of coming back in this one. Just like Clarion did on Wednesday against Slipper Rock. They were down by eight points at halftime and still won. Like we mentioned earlier, the Vulcans are a second-half team as we see some cross-court passing. And this is the Deli Knack handed over, over to Butler. Vulcans change to a 1-2 defense as Butler hands it off to Delianak. Delianak forces inside to Raleigh. Raleigh loses the ball and Umbrowski stole it away. Here comes Fortune. Fortune slows things up. Hands it off the way. It's back to Fortune. Over to Jackie Beck. Jackie Beck. Over to Fortune. Fortune pulls up for a jumper. No good. Rebound by Butler. Here come the Rock. Butler, he's got Raleigh with him. Butler will take it himself and put it in and an and one. Great play by Butler. And we'll have to see where that foul's going to be on. That's six points now for Anthony Butler. And that's going to go on Jake Jakovic. That's his second foul. So three Vulcans now with two fouls each. You don't want to get, and they're three big important players as well. You don't want to get them in foul trouble early in this game with 5'11 left. And you're down by 12, possibly 13 after this uh, free throw attempt. Butler is only shooting 58.2% from the free throw stripe this season. And that will not get better as he misses, but a rebound by Briggs. Briggs puts it up, can't get it to go. Briggs continues to fight for the ball. Briggs with a great effort and draws the foul. That's what that's the play that Maurice Briggs brings to the table. And he's been on fire. And that's going to be on Dombrowski, his first foul. Only 11 fouls on the year, I believe, Dombrowski had. He's one of the lowest foul uh, givers for the Vulcans, but... Briggs, he's been on fire for the last week, 29, 27. I thought maybe he might go 25, trying to keep it in a pattern right there as he'll miss his first free throw. But the rebounding is also what he brings, averaging 7.5 per game. He's a complete package for the Rock and has emerged as one of the best players in the PSAC West. I, I definitely look to see him uh, on the PSAC West uh, uh, conference. Uh, uh, the all-conference Yeah, that's why, yeah, right. <laughs> Good, good thing of the word there, but yes, yes, definitely on conference team here. And he's a senior, and he's from Norristown High School, which is a close to my neck of the woods. And those Norristown teams very have had very good success. They've had a big rivalry with Chester back home in Philadelphia. Nonetheless, Chris Williams will hand the ball over to Fortune. Fortune over to Dombrowski. Dombrowski works inside the Williams. Williams puts up the shot and doesn't get to go, but he will go to the line for two. And we'll have to see who the foul's going to be on. It's going to be a number 23. That's Anthony Butler. That's his first. That's also the seventh foul for Slippery Rock. California also has seven, though, as well. So it's going to, Cal's going to have to watch their foul problems right now because they don't want to give Slippery Rock any free points at the free throw line either. As Chris Williams going to go to the line for two. Chris Williams, senior from Philadelphia and Bishop McDevitt High School. 
68.3% from the free throw line, and he misses his first there. And with 68.3%, sometimes you're going to hit both. Sometimes you'll hit one of two. As Drew Cook re-enters the game, I believe Jack Ubik is taking a seat with two fouls. As Williams makes the second, that is his first point of the game. And the Vulcans have hit double digits now with 448 left in the first half. They really need to pick up the pace for themselves. A long road to climb here as we got 441 left here in the first half as we see Butler put inside the Briggs. Briggs, he's got two on him, draws a foul. And that's going to go against Chris Williams. That will be his first as Williams bumped him as he's trying to dribble away. That will send Lewis Briggs to the line where he's a 73% free throw shooter as you round out his numbers. So not the greatest of numbers, but he'll give you a chance for, for some free points at the line. Briggs hits his first. And it was a one and one, so he had to make that one again, another opportunity. I forgot to mention that before. It was not a shooting foul as he was dribbling away when Williams bumped him. And with 18 fouls for the Vulcans, the Rock is two away here, as we'll see a sub coming in for the Rock. That'll be Tavari Perry. He will check in for, I believe that will be Delniak. As the Rock extends their lead to 14, the largest lead of the day so far, and with 4.30 left. Tynell Fortune. Works Volk, around. The Vulcans oh, right now need just a big shot, something to go in. They've hit the rim so many times, have so many that could have fallen that didn't go in. They just need something to go in and get them a little bit of a spark and a momentum in their offense. Rock bench really encouraging their defense, really liking what they see their defense. We see Smith works inside on breaks. Great play by Kenny Smith. Get it to go. Kenny Smith with a big two points. Kenny Smith, I think, worked harder than any player in that position right there. Going against Briggs. Briggs about three inches taller than him, but able to get the shot over him is something that Kenny Smith, he's been working on. He's only averaging about one point a game, but any production you get out of him is worth noting for the Vulcans. This is Perry, hands it off to Kelvin Dixon. Over to Perry, back to Butler. Butler, taking his time, 10, 10 on the shot clock. Butler over to Rind, back to Butler, over to Perry. Four seconds of shot clock. Butler needs to get it to go. Gets off a three, no good. Rebound by Fortune, here come the Vulcans. Fortune with speed. Fortune goes inside and doesn't get it to go. We don't go to the line for, for one, I believe two. And that's going to go on Anthony Butler. That is his second. A couple rock players with two fouls now. That is our last media timeout with 3.23 left. And we will take a break here with 3.23 left as we'll wrap up the first half from the Morrow Fieldhouse. 24-12 Slippery Rock. Don't, don't leave us on CETV. Watch CUTV online anytime, anywhere. Check out your favorite original programs, coverage of the biggest events on campus, and cheer on your Vulcan sports team. CUTV, log on, tune in now. Visit cutv.calu.edu backslash live. With 18 institutions, my conference is the largest league across all NCAA classifications. With nearly 7,000 student athletes competing in 23 championships, my conference sponsors the most championships in Division II. With a 78% academic success rate, my conference graduates student athletes well above the national average. We compete with passion. We take pride in our efforts in the arena and in the classroom. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Passion, pride, Pennsylvania. Thank you for not leaving us here on CUTV as we have 323 left here in the first half from the Morrow Fieldhouse. The Slippery Rock leads the Vulcans 24-12. And Zach has we've been it's been a balanced scoring attack for the most part from, from the Rock. There's most to Quan Davis early. He's kind of handed it off. We see Tabari Perry getting on the board here and then breaks back in the game that Briggs has been getting the points and working up to his uh, normal output. Yeah, he has seven points now in the first half. Davis has seven, Butler has six. So the big three guys for them have been those players as Fortune hits his first three throw. He has three points now, uh, one behind Murphy for the team lead, but all three of those have come from the free throw line. And Tynell Fortune continues his solid play from the free throw stripe. He is now four for four from the line. It's now a 10 point lead again for The Rock. We see a new player in here, Kenny Moore, number 11, a sophomore from Deptford, New Jersey. 
And Moore will hand it off. Ooh, nearly threw it out of bounds there. But Delaninac will control it and give it back to Kenny Moore. And Moore. Under three minutes left here in the first half. He handed it back to Delaninac. Over to Dixon. Dixon puts it up. And it's an air ball. And after a big bounce, and it'll go out of bounds on the rock. And the Vulcans will get the ball back here. And Kenny Moore, a smart play right there. I'll give him credit for that. As Grady's going to come in, Dixon going to take a seat. But I'll give him credit because Kenny Moore, he might not get a lot of playing time, only averaging about two points a game, but smart enough to realize that that ball was going out of bounds off an air ball, trying to bounce it back and see if his teammate could get the ball. A smart play right there from the sophomore. Tynell Fortune. Hands off to Cook. Cook. Not really getting an open look. Cook will work around. Cook pulls up for a jumper. No good. Rebound. Breaks. And I thought that one might have had a chance to fall at the end as Kenny Smith tried to go for a rebound, but he was a little too early, and it just landed into the arms of Brig off a deflection from Tabari Perry. And now we see Moore hand it off to Perry, back to Moore. Moore back to Perry. Perry back to Moore. Over to Delianak. Delianak for the top left circle. No good. Rebound by Grady. And Grady came out of nowhere to get that rebound. I didn't even see him. He rode along the baseline, came out from behind the basket like a mystifying shadow kind of figure coming to get the rebound. Delianak hands it off to Grady. Grady over to Perry. Perry works inside, and now he has the ball stolen away by Fortune. Here come the Vulcans. Fortune, he's got Williams with him. Williams goes inside for the dunk and slams it home. Chris Williams and one and gets the Vulcans a big two points. And that might be the biggest two points the Vulcans have had all day the foul gonna go on Jordan Gray that's his first that's the ninth team foul for the Rock but I really hope we get to see a replay no. of this uh, the next uh, thank you yes. who uh, working Whoa. in the truck as we see right there Chris Williams a big slam we've not seen one of that uh, one of those from him all season as he's about to attempt for another three throw they'll be making a poster of Jordan Grady shortly as the Rock will can get the ball off the missed free throw by Chris Williams. And I really saw it. I really liked that energy off the Vulcans' back. It's something we haven't seen in this game so far because the Rock have kind of pulled away for a little bit. Now it's an eight-point lead again now. But maybe that's the spark that the Vulcans can finish this half strong here with 135 remaining. Now the Rock looks to respond. Breaks. He's got Dombrowski and Williams all. Gets it back to Grady. Over to Moore. Moore to Delianak. Delianak wants a three. It gets it. Pure shot from Delianak. And the Rock respond. It's now an 11-point lead. California, they had a spark of hope for a second. They were back within single digits. If they can get within single digits here before halftime, I believe they really think they can have a chance to come back. Because Slippy Rock, 27 points, not a normal offensive output for the Rock. And the nice performance so far by the Vulcans defense. They just need the offense to go. It's Chris Williams, and a great shot. He gets it to go and falls for two. Chris Williams with back-to-back -back great plays. And now Williams has five points. It's now a nine-point Rock lead. There's about a 20 second difference between shot and game clock. Slipper Rock can hold it, run it down, and give the Vulcans last possession. And it looks like that's what they're going to do as Kenny Moore keeps holding the ball. And the Rock has a lot of, has some time to play with here. We got 15 on the shot clock. Moore setting up a play. Hands it off to Perry. Perry over to Moore, over to Delianak. Delianak almost lost the ball. Back to Moore. Moore, six seconds on the shot clock. Over to Delianak. Delianak needs a shot. Three seconds. Delianak with a shot. No good. Rebound Chris Williams. Vulcans one last shot here as Drew Cook almost lost the ball. Great awareness to keep it in alive. And the shot clock should be off if there's only 10 seconds left. The shot clock is running though, but it should not. It's off uh, now. And actually just turned off with five seconds left. Fortune to Cook. One last shot. Cook got it to go. What a shot by Drew Cook, and it gives the Vulcans nice momentum as Tynell Fortune gets a fist pump in midcourt. And being down by seven, the Rock let Clarion come back, being down by eight on Wednesday night. Let's see if the Vulcans can do the same in the second half. The Vulcans look to continue momentum in the second half. We will take a break. It's halftime at the Morrow Fieldhouse. Stay tuned for the second half up next. NCAA Division II has much to cheer about. As nearly 100,000 student athletes compete with passion and pride. And I'm pleased to share the best news of all. Student athletes are outperforming the rest of the D2 student body in graduation rates. Just another reason why you'll hear us say with pride, I chose Division II. Learn more at D2SA.org. 
Let's take it to the field. I come through like a freight train, about to push the line back. Only see the gold line, don't matter if your line stack. Because I'm a soldier, you can see my face paint. Know that I'ma get mine by knowing that the rest came. We ready for it. let's get it on. We ready for it. let's get it on. Cal U Vulcans Basketball is presented by First Niagara Bank, JD Waterproofing, Lee Supply Company, The Physical Therapy Institute, Trip Total Media, and UPMC Health Plan. As we get ready for the second half here, Zach, uh, take a look at some stats here. What's the one stat that's uh, really glaring so far? Well, so far, there's two. Rebounds, being down eight rebounds is not going to help your cause. And free throws. You need to make your free throws. Williams has missed a couple. I think uh, Jackie Bick missed two as yeah, well. Yeah, you're right. He missed both of he his. He shot out for the first half, too. And five of nine. That's four points you could have had. That You would have been down by three points. You make a couple more shots. I, I can let them slide missing the shots because they've hit the rim at least. They've been close. Yeah. But also, Cal, seven steals to two for Slipper Rock. They're getting their hands in the passing lanes a little bit better than Slipper Rock is. And now that Slipper Rock's coming towards us, we'll be able to better see Cal's defensive effort. Now that they're going to be coming towards us and facing us, we won't have to see their offense. They'll be on the other side. Indeed we will. As score is only 27 to 20, Cal made a late run there at the end play by Chris Williams as we're going to look at some first half highlights. We see right here Jordan Grady, his only basket of the game. That's a two-pointer right there. And it's Saquon Davis feeding Tabari Perry for the big slam. But we might see one a little bit later in these highlights that's a bit bigger. As you see right here, Chris Williams taking off, getting the slam. It was an and one opportunity. He missed the free throw. Uh, goes back to the missed free throws. And then he makes a long uh, jumper right here for two. Chris Williams started to heat up. He has five points tied with Drew Cook for the team lead. And right there, I actually missed who scored that one because I was looking down. That was Josh or Dombrowski. Or excuse me, no, that was Drew Cook on that one. As you see right there, Coach Bill Brown. Uh, California, and we see actually the women's team behind him as well from earlier on. They won. But California, they have to realize Slipper Rock is a little bit pressured right now. They Slipper Rock knows they need to win this game to stay in the hunt for first place. Cal might be able to take advantage of that, knowing that Super Rock, if they can start to shoot themselves in the foot, per se, Cal might be able to start to take over and come back in this one and maybe steal away a win from the Morrow Fieldhouse fans. And as you said, they had an eight-point lead against Clarion on Wednesday night at the Tippin Gymnasium, and they, they lost that one away. So it'll be interesting to see. The Rock will start here as Perry will inbound to Davis. We saw a lot of Saquon Davis. He was running circles around the Vulcans' defense early on. But as we see Davis with a lot pass there to Dixon. Dixon works on Dombrowski. Dixon puts up a shot, can't get it to go, rebound Dombrowski. And that's a good start right there for the Vulcans, getting Slipperak to miss some shots. Gives you more opportunity to try and cut the deficit. You're down by seven now, any point helps. And Jake Jackiebeck, who said earlier, was shut out in the first half. That's the second time in, two ga in three games that he's been shut out in the first half. Dombrowski over to Cook, over to Williams. Back to Jackie Beck. Jackie Beck. Ten seconds on the shot clock. And Jackie Beck. Seven seconds. Pulls up for a long three. And buries it! What a way for to get on the board for Jake Jackie Beck. He hit that one from the parking lot. And right there, you're down now to four points. 19 minutes left. The Vulcans are definitely still in this game, but Jake Jackie Beck, you getting him started. He's the key focal point to the Vulcans offense. Now Slippery Rock looks to respond. A four-point lead for the Rock now. As we see Briggs work inside on Williams. The ball stolen away. Great defense by Chris Williams. And that's why Williams leads and steals for the Vulcans this season. He just gets his hands right in there for Briggs. Avoids getting called for a foul and gives the Vulcans another possession. When we called that women's game, we talked about opportunistic defense. Opportunistic as Murphy tried to feed uh, Williams there, but it did not hit a Rock on the right out, and the Rock will get the ball back. Yeah, and Murphy just trying a little bit too much right there. Murphy maybe should have thrown it back out to Cook or Jackie Beck or Dombrowski beyond the arc and then work back inside with 18 and a half left. 
And this is a game where possession by possession will be huge, definitely so far. As we see Butler walking around. 18-24 left here in the second half. We see Davis and Davis, a turnover, a turnover by Davis, and the Vulcans get the ball back. So Slippery Rock start not starting off on the right foot here. A couple turnovers. Let's see if the Vulcans continue to cut in the lead. Like I said, if Slippery Rock shoots themselves in the foot, the Vulcans will have opportunities to come back. Possessions matter now. You're down by four, second half, but a lot of time left. Chris Williams over to Jackie back. Over to Cook. Cook pulls up for a jumper. No good. Rebound. That's Dixon. Dixon. Long course Perry. He's got Davis with a big end. And a slam home. Davis to Perry again. And the Rock responds. And Tabari Perry has four points today. All four of those points have come off <laughs> alley-oop slams from, from Saquon Davis. So if he keeps doing that, I'm sure, I don't think he'll care how many points he scores. He likes getting the highlights there. He'll definitely be on a highlight table to see Jackie back work inside. And Jackie back gets on the board. Jake Jackie back with five points early on. It's now a four-point lead again. And that's what the Vulcans need to, to do. If Slipper Rock scores, as we're going to see, I believe a foul was called against Jake Jack. Actually, no, no foul called. I thought I overheard a foul, but. I think the inbounds pass was that will be a foul, though. That will be a foul, actually. That's his third. First team foul with 17 and a half left. But back to what I was saying, mm. if California can limit Slipper Rock to two point buckets and then respond with their own, they're still within mm. this one. You want it to stay within four to the seven range. And Tynell Fortune enters the game for Jake Jackie back. And as we see Perry looks around, hands it off to Briggs. Breaks from the top right circle, pulls up for a three, and buries it! There's Briggs going from beyond the arc, it's 32-25. And like I said, keep it within seven at least. You don't have to respond with a three of your own. Just get some points there in this possession. And Williams working underneath, hands it to Cook. Cook fires it out to Williams. Williams will try to respond with three, and a no good. Rebound Briggs. Here come the Rock. Briggs, he's got Perry with him. Over to Davis. Davis. Can't get it to go. Rebound by Perry. And Perry is stolen away by Williams, but Williams, and, yep, Williams, not called for the foul, and the Vulcans get the ball back. Nice play I by actually, Chris Williams. I was sorry for interrupting. Tabari Perry was out in the end line there, Matt. I was trying to tell yeah. you that in the best no, way yeah. possible, but uh, it was a turnover by Slipper Rock, and now California has another possession here. They just keep adding the possessions, but they need to start coming through. Saw a lot in the women's game where the inbounds line was getting worked very often, and it created a couple turnovers as we see Fortune. Hand it off to Dombrowski. Dombrowski feeds inside to Murphy. He's got Briggs all over. Murphy bulldozing his way inside and draws a foul on, I believe that would be Butler. We'll have to see here. Actually, I think they're going to call Lewis Briggs. Oh, and yeah. that is Lewis Briggs. That's his second. Third. Oh, yeah, that was they switched. The, um, uh, that's foul, the yeah. team's second foul for Sibrock as well. So 16 and a half left. We're about to approach our first media timeout in about 30 seconds. Murphy going to go to the line for two, a 64% free throw shooter. Lonzo Murphy had a huge second half against Gannon, and he misses his first free throw there. Murphy, we said in the pregame, completely took over the Gannon game. That's, I mean, that's the reason why the Vulcans won on Wednesday against uh, the Golden Knights is a play by Murphy. Murphy completely got into foul trouble early on. The Coach Brown sat him down, and he played like a completely different player as he hits his first free throw here to make it a six-point game with 16-31 remaining. And I know Murphy's not the best free throw shooter in the year, but you've got to start hitting both free throws. You're down by six. You've missed six free throws in this game, I believe, or five, mm -hmm. somewhere around in there. You could easily be tied right now. And now Briggs will get worked inside on Dabrowski, on Murphy, a loose ball, and that's Williams. Chris Williams with another steal. And that's two steals against Lewis Briggs now in this half for Chris Williams. He's just getting his hands in there and the big man, not letting him get to the basket as easily. Chris Williams, hands off the fortune. The matchup between Briggs and Murphy has been so physical. We saw Murphy get an elbow in there. They're working hard inside there. See Dombrowski hand it back to Fortune. Fortune looking for Murphy. Murphy, he's got Briggs all over him. Dixon tried to wrestle the ball out, but he gets to Williams. Back to Dombrowski. Dombrowski wants a three. No good. Rebound. Loose ball. Out of bounds. Rock ball. And good hustle, though, by Chris Williams trying to get to that one as we're at our first media timeout. With 15.40 left, that time went by completely fast, Matt, and the Vulcans are down by six, but they're still within this one, uh, but they just got to get some points in their possessions. One at a time even would work if their defense can keep playing the way they have been. We'll take a look at some replays here. Here's Jake Jackiebeck's first points of the game. It could come a better time. Long three-pointer. 
Yeah, and Jackie, like you said, shut out in the first half. He scored 10 last game, five so far today. As you see, another slam from Tabari Perry. There's just no defending height in this game as long as you can jump that high. And then Lewis Briggs goes for a three, and he's actually a 31% free uh, three-point shooter on the year, so it's not uh, rare that he goes for a three. Uh, like I said, the free throws are starting to really haunt the Vulcans. Yep. Um, at our media, or excuse me, at halftime, they missed four of them. I believe they missed five or six now. Yeah. You could easily be down by one or tied in this game, and that's something that matters later on. And we will take a look. This is our YouTube page, and our YouTube page is CUTV Sports 1. That's all one word. And on our CUTV page, you can watch the replay of this game, full-length replay of this game, or any other basketball game we've called this season. Plus, if you missed the Vulcan football game or a high school football game we called from this past season, it's all on there. We have games from like two years ago. We have old match plays on there. We have match plays from this year. And then for our CUTV News Center page, that's where all our newscasts were on there. And myself getting our first newscast broadcast of the season on Thursday. We have newscasts from a couple years ago. It's all on our YouTube page. Check us out at CUTV Sports 1 and CUTV News Center. All one word. Now we're getting back to action. I believe Slipper Rock is going to get the ball out of the inbounds when uh, California lost the ball out of bounds on their possession with 15.40 left. So Quan Davis will take the ball, start it off. Hands it off to Butler. Over to Perry. Perry. Dixon. Dixon pulls up. No good. And a big jumper there by Perry. Perry lost the ball, and then the Rock will retain possession. And Tabari Perry right there. I could have sworn he was going to go out of bounds after he got that rebound, but able to keep his feet in. And his height, 6'8", he doesn't play like he's 6'8". He plays a lot bigger than that. And he's been one of the key players for the Rock today. And we also seen he also has a quite the vertical in his play as he start the offense. Hand it off to Saquon Davis. Davis over to Butler, over to Dixon. Dixon thought about a three, thought otherwise. As the ball founds his way back to Butler, over to Dixon. Quick passing. Dixon wants a three. No good rebound to Broski. And Dixon on the year, a 33% three-point shooter. Oh, about one of every three. You want guys that don't hit on a lot of shots, taking them from deep and trying to get the Vulcans uh, away from a bigger deficit than what they have. And Chris Williams gives it the fortune at the top of the circle. Fortune over to Cook. Back to Nebraska, over to Williams. Williams works inside and the ball gets knocked out by Briggs and the Vulcans will retain possession. And there's only seven seconds on the shot clock though, so the Vulcans have to mind that. You might try to find Fortune or Cook for a runner, or maybe even Dombrowski for a deep three, that he can shoot those as well. He's hit a couple big ones today. The ball's fed to Murphy. Murphy on Briggs. Murphy with right hand hook. No good rebound Briggs. And now here comes the rock. Perry. Works inside, gets it to Dixon, a forced pass, and it'll go out on Dixon, and the Vulcans will get the ball back. And right there, Tabari Perry trying a little bit too much. That looks like that is Maurice Lewis Briggs. He looks to be a little shaken up. We'll see Eric Raleigh come back in. I think Briggs was getting a little bit abused by Alonzo Murphy on the other end. As he's going to take a seat, he can't even get to his seat right now. It looks like it might be an abdomen injury uh, based on where he got hit. It's fortune. We'll start with the Vulcans. See that huge physical battle between Briggs and Murphy. Now we'll see what Raleigh can do with Murphy. Williams. Over to Fortune. Fortune works inside on Davis. And swatted away. Swat team by Eric Raleigh. Here comes Butler. Butler gets it to go. And the Rock take an eight-point lead with 13.53 left. And California has to respond with a bucket here. It doesn't need to be a three, but at least a two because you can't let Slipper Rock get back out to a double-digit lead like they had in the first half when you couldn't make shots. You're doing that again here. You need to get back in this one. And Jake Jackie back. Five points already this half. Here's Williams. Two to Dombrowski. Dombrowski nearly had it stolen away by Butler. Back to Jackie back. Jackie back wants three. Off the rim. Rebound. Big scrum. And still no signal. And it will stay with the Vulcans. And it'll go. Okay, it is actually yeah. Vulcan's ball. I thought I saw right. the ref point both ways at one point. It's like six people in front of the ref from a vantage point, but nonetheless, and a foul will be called here on, I believe that'll be Eric Raleigh. That'll be a second. 
And that's actually his first personal, but the scoreboard says second. That's the third team foul, I believe, maybe fourth. I'm not exactly sure, the scoreboard a little off. Jackie back no good with the jumper, rebound Raleigh, big scrum. And I believe a foul will get called on. It will be on Fortune. And the Rock will get the ball back here. That will be his third. So that's big. That's huge. Tiny out Fortune in foul trouble here as we see Drew Cook will indeed check in for Fortune. Actually, no. Jackie Bick is checking out. Fortune is going to stay in there. A bit of a surprise right there. I think Jackie Bick's been a little bit. Actually, no, now they switch. Yeah. Fortune going out, Jackie Bick staying in. Jackie Bick's been the better offensive scorer for the Vulcans today with five points, Fortune with four. And also, Fortune, I mean, just getting the three fouls. You need him to hit, possibly hit late shots to try to cut in the lead here late in the game. As the Rock have extended here with 13 minutes remaining. And this is Davis working on Cook. Continues to work on Cook, runs around. Works inside finally, gets swatted away by Williams. Williams, he's got Jackie back wide open. Jackie back, gets it to go and one! Jake Jackie back, making it happen down the court and a smart heads up play there by Chris Williams to see Jackie back down the court and found them. And we might see a replay of this one coming up in a moment and we will. A base or a football like pass right to the ground, bounced directly to Jackie Bick and he puts up the layup and that foul's gonna be on Anthony Butler, that is his third. So a couple of players for Silver Rock, not in foul trouble, but starting to get that way as Armin Marks is going to come in for Josh Dombrowski and Lewis Briggs is going to come in for Eric Raleigh, as well as Butler took a seat, I believe, for Matej Delinic. Yep. And Jackie Beck will go to the line. You see, mentioned earlier he missed his first two free throws in the first half and hits his, hits his third attempt. So it's now a five-point lead. Again, a huge, huge play there by Jake Jackie Beck forcing the foul. See if the Rock can respond. Jackie Bick now the leading scorer for the Vulcans with eight, all in this second yep. half. It's been the Jackie Bick show for the Vulcans. And they had a player like Murphy on Wednesday have a big second half to love him the victory. We'll see if it can do the same here today as we see Delianak. Five against five and hands it off to Briggs. Briggs taking his time directing the traffic. Briggs working on Murphy. Murphy. Briggs nearly stole away by Cook, but Delianak will pull up. No good. Rebound Chris Williams. And a good defense right there. Cook. Almost intercepted the pass, but Jake Jakubic was working against, I believe it was Saquon Davis, doing a good job there as Williams almost hits the basket, but then Alonzo Murphy tips it in. A great play by Alonzo Murphy, and suddenly we have a three-point game with 12 minutes remaining. Like I said, you cannot count out the Vulcans here. The Slipper Rock knows they have pressure on them. It's a one-possession game now. The Rock, as we mentioned earlier, a two-game losing streak. They've seen themselves go from top of the PSAC West to a tie for third. Actually, they're in fourth because they lost to Gannon. It stole away by Drew Cook. Here comes Cook. Drew Cook puts it in. It's a one-point game. Timeout, Slippery Rock. And just like this is... But, uh, Matt, this is not the media. We'll see if they do call it. 11.36 left. But, Matt, like I said, just like that, it's a one-point game. And the Vulcans have momentum going their way. Slipper Rock has to take a timeout right here, knowing that the Vulcans are playing aggressive style on defense, intercepting some passes. I'm anxious to see that stat sheet when it comes over, see how many steals the Vulcans have, because I know at halftime, well, I have it to was, check back here. They it had was nine at the last media time, at last time we got stats, and now it's over double digits. You saw Chris Williams got a steal. Drew Cook had that nice play there. Mm -hmm. and while we have some time here, we'll take some looks at some highlights. There's Chris Williams, mainly like a quarterback, best Ben Roethlisberger impression, and Jake Jackubeck getting the finish. <laughs> and Jake Jackubeck, that was a nice play there, got a three-point play. And Chris Williams as well, he's really, he missed that shot there, but Alonzo Murphy, a good cleanup act right there. I expected that one just to come down for a rebound, but then Murphy tipped it in at the last second, and Drew Cook splitting between Davis and Delanac, just putting the ball in, I believe. They probably just laid off trying to avoid the end one and try and tie this yep. game, which is smart by them, but it's I'm kind of speechless as to how to explain the Vulcans coming back in this one. They were down by as many as 14 points, I believe, Matt, and the effort they've proven, even if they come away with a loss in this one, they can say that we went into Slipper Rock, came back at least, because they've had troubles with Slipper Rock in the past. We, we all know that here yep. on the crew. They lost by 19, about, I think, 20 yep. last year as well. So being down by one, there's still a lot of time left. 
but having momentum on their side is a big factor for the Vulcans trying to prove to 500 in the, in the division. And as he's mentioned on the first part of our broadcast, they have not won in this building since February of 2010, and they have not beaten Slippery Rock since February 2011. So it's something the Rock have been all problems for the Vulcans. Uh, that definitely since I've arrived at Cal in fall 2011, as we see the Rock work inside. Here's Davis inside two breaks. Breaks can to go. Rebound by Marks. And a bus, uh, basket here gives California their first lead of the game. Dombrowski over to Jackie Beck. Over to Marks. Marks had some big shots against Gannon. Let's see what happens. You see Drew Cook, the ball. Cook to Murphy. Over to Dombrowski, to Marks. Marks thought about it. Backs up, hands it to Dombrowski. Five on the shot clock. Five on the hurry. shot clock, they gotta go. Murphy works inside and draws a foul. I Great see, play. I believe that's gonna be on Lewis Briggs, and it is. That is Lewis Briggs' third foul. That's the. That's actually gonna be our media timeout with 10.47 left. And we will go to commercial here. When we come back, it's a one point game. We'll see, can the Vulcan pull another upset on the road? Stay tuned. Need to know what's happening in your area? CUTV News Center brings you your best local news. Events on and around campus. Local weather. Vulcan sports coverage. CUTV News Center, live Thursdays at 5. And we welcome you back to the Morrow Fieldhouse, a one-point game here in the second half. And we're going to, uh, Zach, tell us a little bit about the Bill Brown Show. Well, the Bill Brown Show is the best way for you to get into the mind of the longtime coach for the Vulcans basketball team every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evening on CUTV. you got also player interviews and highlights as well, and always looking ahead on the schedule too. And I definitely have something to talk about after this game as Murphy goes inside, almost gets the end one, but he'll go to the line to possibly give the Vulcans their first lead of the game. Yeah, even if he hits one, they're tied, and I think the Vulcans are going to accept that right here. Like I said, it's kind of partially blocked. Uh, it's hard to tell who that is. I think it's it might Raleigh. be Lewis Br or excuse me, that is Raleigh. That's his second foul in the team fifth for Slipper Rock, so they're starting to get into that area where they're in trouble for fouls. Slipper Rock crowd starting to work up, and Murphy, oof, ouch. Yeah, he, I think he completely missed the rim on that one. If yeah, barely that, nicked the side of it. Yeah, that... And he's got the student section right down there. And they're in the Rock, they call him the Rock Rowdies here at Slippery Rock. And Murphy, kick it to go, but Norman Marks gives the Vulcans the lead with a tip in. Oh my goodness, what a play. That was possibly the best play of the game. And Armin Marks, that's his first bucket on a tip in off a free throw where it could have been possibly called offensive goaltending too because it was still coming down. But the Vulcans have officially come back down by as many as 14, up by one with 10-21 left. Simply, simply just a lot of heart at his performance today as The Rock looks to get the lead back. This is, he gets inside the Raleigh. Raleigh pulls up, kick it to go, rebound, Marks. Good defense again right there, trying to force some shots. Marks, he'll get called for a travel. A tough turnover there for the Vulcans as they look to extend the lead, but The Rock will put and we'll see right here on the replay, right there, gets a couple steps, and then another step, thinking I could dribble here, but he already took those two steps. He had to stop and then pass, uh, not realizing that he already gone a couple two steps. Good call by the referees, as this is a Quan Davis. And pulling off the direct offense. We have 9.50 left here in the second half. Vulcans, one point lead. Dixon to Delinac. Delinac wants a three, no good. Rebound Dombrowski. 
And again, forcing shots. Delinek, he was open as Armin Marks takes a three. Good! Armin Marks! A, it's a 38-34 game! What a shot! And Armin Marks, he heated up during the Gannon second half as well with Alonzo Murphy and others. See if he can do the same here today. Do my eyes to see me. It's a four-point lead for the Vulcans. Slippery Rock. And they respond. They haven't been down by this much in the game so far. Davis to Delianak. Over to Davis. Finds its way to Perry. Back to Davis. Davis trying to get a three. Can't get open. Six on the shot clock. The Rock got it. Has to get something off to Delianak. Two seconds. Can't get off. Shot clock expired. And good. Clutch shot by Delianak. And that was a good opportunity by Delianak. Shaking Jackie Pick off. But also, defensively for the Vulcans, running down the shot clock is still very important because you're not always going to hit those buzzer beaters every time. Here comes Marks on Perry. Marks swatted away by Raleigh. What a play by Eric Raleigh. And even though Raleigh swatted it out of bounds, the Vulcans are going to take back over, though, with 21 seconds on the shot clock. And Dixon's going to come out with Rind coming in and Anthony Butler as well. And we're also going to see a slew of subs for the Vulcans. Fortune, Williams, and Smith coming in. Jackie Bick, Murphy, and Cook going out. 8.39 <coughs> left here in the second half. We'll see Drew Cook. He will inbound. So Marks. And Fortune will take it, and he will begin to direct traffic here as the Vulcans look to extend their lead. Fortune, he's got Davis on him. Gives it to Cook over to Marks. Marks to Cook. Cook, four in the shot clock. Got to go. Drew Cook, Williams. And shot clock violation. He was pushed out of bounds. Okay, so that'll be a, that'll be a on, foul on Slippery Rock. That's on number three, Max Rind. That's his first. We'll see right here. That's going to be a fresh shot clock for the Vulcans, too. Push out of bounds. Yep. That's a questionable call, yeah. though, too. But his feet were moving. Mm -hmm. I think that's what gave it away. But now the Vulcans have a clean possession to work with. And I heard the shot clock go off, so that's why I thought it was be called. So, but nonetheless, the Vulcans will take over. 8-10 left, a two-point lead. Sign out Fortune. Gives it to Williams. Williams thought about a three, thought otherwise. And he'll get called for a travel. Big turnover there, and the Rock will look to tie the game. And even if the Rock do tie the game, though, or take a lead on a possible three, California knows that their offense kind of has I guess last possession, kind of technically, I guess yep. you could call it. Because even if they tie it, they can go next possession and take the lead back. Great point there as we see Saquon Davis, the brains of, this, of the Rock offense, gives it to Perry. Perry to Davis. Davis has been shut out in this half as the ball has made its way over to Butler. And it finds its way back to Davis. Ten on the shot clock. Over to Perry. Perry inside. He's got Butler. Butler! No good rebound marks. And great defense right there, suffocating Butler with Williams and Armin Marks. Armin Marks coming away with the clutch rebound. Not sure how many Armin Marks has, but he's had a lot in the last few possessions for the Vulcans, really helping get the ball in their court. Very inspired performance as we see Marks plow over and draw an offensive foul. He got called for the charge. He plowed over Max Wren there, but it looked like Wren's feet as we'll have our third media timeout here. And Wren's feet was plant, were planted on the ground, so good call by the ref. Fishy was standing right there on the replay. Yeah, he's also very close to that restricted area, though, and that would have been a defensive foul. That's and Armin Marks might have been going to the line trying to extend the lead. I'm sure we'll see a, a few replays here, but Matt, it's been an amazing game as we look at some of the replays. Armin Marks, that three yeah. was possibly the biggest shot of the game, but California hasn't scored since. That's right. They need to get the offense going again with 7-12 left, and then Delanak shaking Jakubic off. Jakubic doesn't want to try too hard because he's in a little bit of foul trouble yep. as well. But that was the last bucket for the Rock as well. The offense starting to kind of slow down a little bit. But Matt, these this game right here matters, but the next coming games, you got Mercyhurst at home on the fifth, at Edinburgh next sun, or Saturday, then IUP at home trying to get revenge from the KCAC loss, and then at Clarion on the 15th as the season is winding down trying to get some playoff positioning. And it's so, as we saw the standings earlier, that PSAC West is so tight. Just teams just fighting with each other. You see Seton Hills in a big game with Gannon today. And it's, it could just jump all around. Just each each day, on Wednesday or Saturday, it'll jump around. We've seen 
the Vulcans were once out of the playoff picture, now they're in the playoff picture. But right now, the two teams that the Vulcans are sandwiched in between, between the seventh and fifth seed, have, they don't have the tiebreaker on them with Seton Hill and Pitt Johnstown, but the Vulcans will have two cracks at those teams at the end of this, at the season. As you see, the Rock was at the top of the leaderboard, but definitely a huge game as the Vulcans look to take revenge on Mercyhurst on Wednesday. But first, 7-11 left in the second half here. The Vulcans clinging to a two-point lead, a lead that a lead that we thought the, we'd never say. The Vulcans with a lead after being down as many as 14 in the first half. As we'll see, breaks back in the game. Breaks, Bulldogs lost the ball, and it'll be, anyway, it'll be the Vulcans' ball. Oh, we got a call. It's against Slippery Rock. Hart, uh, don't know exactly what it was. I couldn't hear the ref. Inadvertent whistle. It's actually an inadvertent whistle, I believe. So it's California ball, though, with 6.55 left and a new shot clock and a new possession. And Chris Williams. Hands it to Kenny Smith. Smith to Marks. Marks pulls up. No good. Rebound Butler. Here comes a rock. He's got Dalianak cross court. He's got Marks on him. Dalianak puts it up. Tie game and one. What a play by Dalianak. And Armin Marks right there. I, I think he tried to wrap him up a little bit. Not able to. Dalianak get the shot off. And that's going to bring up an and one with 639 left. Try and give Slipper Rock the lead. He's a 68% foul shooter on the year. Marks. Tries to go for ball, actually, and just comes away with a foul as Delnick hit the floor hard, trying to give the Rock back the lead. And you just saw that speed that Slippery Rock has, able to get it in transition so quick, as we'll see Jackie, it'll be uh, Kenny Smith and Drew Cook will check out, and Jackie Beck will, re will return for the Vulcans. I believe Alonzo Murphy will check in as well. No good. Tie game, it's still. And a big miss right there, and a big rebound from Josh Dombrowski. He's had a lot of rebounds down low near the baseline today. You cannot overlook that effort. Four rebounds so far, Dombrowski. That's, that's as many as anyone has gotten for the Vulcans. Fortune. Gives it to Jackie Beck. Back to Fortune. Jackie Beck inside the Murphy. He's got Briggs on him. Murphy bulldozes his way in and misses a dunk. But it'll be a call on Briggs. And oh. It, Hard to see exactly what that call's going to be. That's the fourth foul on Lewis Briggs. He gets one more. He's fouled out of the game. We'll see right here. Alonzo Murphy, a good move. Tried to go up for a possible dunk. But that's the strategy. Go inside. I think that's something they lost when they put Kenny Smith in and took Murphy out. But Murphy had to get a breather. You go inside with him, you can't really defend Murphy. He's got a lot of swim moves, post moves down there that work for his favor. And Murphy will go to the free throw line again, and he will give the Vulcans back the lead with 6-11 remaining. That's eight points now for Murphy. And Murphy also has only one rebound. That's actually surprising to me. But Briggs going to the bench now. We'll see if that has any impact on the Slippery Rock offense and uh, defense. And you must credit the Vulcan defense. They've held him to just 10 points as Murphy misses his second free throw. A big miss. So Vulcans continue to struggle with the free throws. And a couple more of those free throws, you might have a five-point lead at this point with six minutes left. You just can't look back at this time and question why. You have to keep going forward. Dalianak, he's been huge for the Rock in recent minutes. Hands it off to Wren, back to Butler. Butler to Wren. To Dalianak. Works inside. Can't get it to go. Shot clock's at five. Rock got to get something off. Winding down, here's Wren at the buzzer. No good, rebound. No good, slam home by Perry! Oh, ho, ho. what a slam by Perry as the shot clock. They kept missing the rebounds, but Perry just came out of nowhere and put the finishing touch on it. And it's fortuitous that that one actually hit the rim for Slippery Rock the first time, because if it didn't, the shot clock would have went off and no shot would have gone off. And the entire Rock match is standing as Jackie Beck misses a three, rebound by Butler. Murphy actually tipped that one out, trying to give it to Williams, but Butler was right there to clean it up. Perry loses the ball, Falcons ball. And that one was just lost out of bounds. I expected maybe a uh, offensive foul call. So look right here, Jack Beck, his feet were moving. Now he just lost the ball, and the Falcons can take back the lead with five minutes left exactly. Jackie Beck. Something also to note, the Falcons are in the one and one situation now as well. That is correct, so Giffley can't afford to give up any other fouls. As we see, Jackie Beck loses the ball. I believe that was hit out by Butler. 
It will still be Cal Ball with 16 seconds on the shot clock. They don't need to hurry, but they have to make sure they set up the play the way they want it to be set up. Williams to Jackie Mack. Jackie Mack pulls up for the lead and got it! Jake Jackie Mack gives the Vulcans the lead back. That's 10 now for Jackie Mack. He's the only player for the Vulcans in double figures. It's all been this half. It's all been this half. That's what's important. Mm -hmm. Without his production, the Vulcans are nowhere in this game. Delianak to Rind. Back to Delianak. Delianak pulls up for a three. No good. Rebound Drew Cook. Here come the Vulcans. Cook to Jackie Beck. Back to Cook, to Dombrowski, to Williams. Williams settle things down, hands it to Jake Jackie Beck, top of the circle. And that's what Williams brings to this team. He's the only senior telling everybody, calm down, don't rush. You have four minutes left now, up by one. You have to make everything count at this point. Dombrowski pulls up, I believe that was tipped a little bit, but gets it right back, puts up a shot, rebound, big scrum. Falcons ball. Great We're effort there get by our Dombrowski. Media, our last media timeout with 351. Our last media timeout, we will send it to our final commercial break. Can the Vulcans hold on to this one point lead? Don't miss it on CUTV. We have so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division II student athletes have led a 10 year initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life threatening medical conditions. Nearly $3 million have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. Watching CUTV, California University Television. Welcome back to the Morrow Fieldhouse. As we will show you the the jumper that gave the Vulcans the lead here with Jake Jackie back a clutch ten points in the second half. As we get our shot here from our uh, Hammer Three person, Allison Steinheiser. My name is Matt Hagee. This is Zach Lamar. Zach, I mean. Order break. Both our hands were shaking. This game's exciting. This is a very exciting game. I at this point. Win, loss doesn't matter. Both of these teams playing with all their effort and trying to come away with the victory. And fortunate lob pass to Murphy. Murphy works inside of Raleigh, but he loses the ball. It looks like he tried to get it away there, but the Rock in transition. Here's Butler. Butler puts it up, gives the Rock the lead back. That's 10 now for Butler. Now, how can the Vulcans respond? Fortune. Three and a half minutes left. Slows things down to Jackie Beck. To Fortune, inside to Murphy. Murphy to Williams. Williams on about three, he runs inside. Williams puts up a shot and draws a foul. Great play. And that's gonna send Williams to the line 4-2. That's the eighth team foul. Have to see who that one's on. And Williams, a nice shot. I thought about it, three worked inside there. I believe that will be on Perry. It's actually on Raleigh, that's his third. We still, Cannot tell if Lewis Briggs is out there. I don't believe he is. Nope. He's actually right there on the bench. So Williams going to line 4-2. Williams. Tie game. That's six now for Williams. I believe he has three of them from the free throw line. But, but we're going to see Lewis Briggs come back into this game now. Remember, if he gets one more foul, he's fouled out. If I'm the Vulcans, the next offensive possession, I go right after him. Get him to Murphy. Give Murphy. And then there is Briggs on your screen there. Williams for the lead, no good. Another, another missed field free throw. And those missed free throws, if you lose, you'll look back at them, but right now you cannot. With 3.06 left, you just have to keep pushing forward, keep trying to make some baskets. Nine for 17 are the Vulcans from the free throw stripe. As Briggs goes inside, plows over Williams. He's out of the game. He is out of the game. Briggs plowed over Williams. Oh my goodness, and now he's barking at Murphy. Oh my goodness, that is absolutely enormous. That's a big loss for The Rock. It's a good thing Alonzo Murphy got out of that as fast as he could because Alonzo Murphy will admit he has a, an attitude down there, which is good for the team being aggressive. You see right there Josh Dombrowski excited 
as Williams, and we're getting a conversation between uh, Coach Reynolds and the referee with Lewis Briggs, who has fouled out of this game. 2.59 left. We'll have to see how that affects the game plan for Slippery Rock because Eric Raleigh and Kelvin Dixon, they're good players, but Lewis Briggs, he's had dominant games the last couple. If we can get a timeout by California with 2.59 left. And just 10 points of Vulcans have held them. I think, I think without question, win or lose this game, this is the best defense we've seen the Vulcans so far. Considering the opponent they're playing, they've done an excellent job. Breaks who came in just 220, back to back 29, 27 points games, just 10 points, and now you knocked them out of the game. It's just wonderful. Yeah, he finishes with 10 and eight, and Tabari Perry actually has six and 11 right now. Antonio Butler, eight and five. Excuse me, and for the Vulcans, Josh Dombrowski might be the guy that has led the defense today. No points, six rebounds. Yep. That's clearly important in this game. The Vulcans only being out-rebounded by five. But what's most important, Lewis Briggs is out of this yep. game. And he's one of the senior leaders on this team. Him, Josh Martin, both of them not playing right now. You have Tabari Perry, Saquon Davis with 2.55 left. Now Murphy to Marks. Looking for the lead of the Vulcans. Fortune, three-pointer, good! Ty Nell Fortune, his first field goal of the game and it couldn't have given it a better time. And Ty Nell Fortune, he's not had as much success from three-pointers. This year only shooting about 25.5%. He hit a lot of those big threes last year, proving that he's still little man on this team. Now Butler, how will the Rock respond? Rind to Butler, wide open three. Here's a response. No good, rebound Jackie back, and no foul called on Perry. Yeah, I think that's a good no call right there. Right. Perry just kind of ran into him. As we have 2.13 left, Jackie Bick a big clutch rebound. Getting close. Can the Vulcans pull another road upset? Fortune to Dombrowski. To Jackie Beck, to Fortune. Fortune works inside, loses the ball, and he's rebounded by Butler. Here come The Rock. The Rock, Butler, onside, Dombrowski, pulls over Dombrowski, and one! Oh my goodness, what a play by Butler. And Antonio Butler's done that a couple times today. He'll go to the line, try and tie this, shooting 58.2% from the free throw line this year. Dombrowski tried to draw a charge, nope. but his feet were moving yep. right at the last second. Good call. He tried as hard as he could, try to get another one and keep the momentum and Cal's swing, but with a minute 49 left, even if he makes this, it's still a tied game. Yep. Cal does not have to panic. And Butler, only only a 58.2% um, from the line. It's dead silent at the Morrow Fieldhouse. Tie ball game. Now, 148 remaining. Tie ball game. So we see Chris Williams is waiting on the bench to come in. Fortune. To Jackie back, to Murphy, to Marks. Back to Fortune, Fortune thought about it. He'll go inside again. Fortune though, tried to get the Murphy, lost ball. Here comes the Rock. Oh, that was a tough turnover. And Fortune right there, I'm surprised. No, the foul call is Slipper Rock's gonna take a timeout with a minute 22 left. Tied ball game, even if they make a basket, California still has time. They don't have to get it all back at once. If they get a three, you can still hit a two yep. and try and work the foul game as well. And with one, and we'll see, and we'll see our last two three-pointers here coming up on replay. And Fortune, that gave the Balkans a three-point lead. It's first field goal of the day so far, and it couldn't have came at a better time. And then right here, Antonio Butler, the and one. Dombrowski trying to draw a charge. Actually, Armin Marks kind of went yeah. in there too, kind of like a bowling yep. ball going against the pins right there, but Butler, Gets the and one opportunity. And Matt, something I neglected to notice, the Vulcans only have five team fouls. So they yep. still have a foul, foul to give yep. before their next one is they in the bonus. Fouls to give. Well, technically really there only one, because yeah. the second one is gonna put them in the bonus. True, but true. either way you look at it, the Vulcans can kind of play with their own destiny here yep. a little bit. Long way before the double bonus kicks in. But key. Slippery Rock has one more foul before the exactly. double bonus. Exactly. And that's important. So this will be Dalian Akio inbound. If they run this down, it will go within a minute. 
A minute 22 left, 29 seconds on the shot clock. And they will indeed run it down as nobody is moving. Butler, he'll start the offense. He'll hand it back to Wren over to Delianak. Slow tempo here. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Delianak, seven seconds. Brock has to get something going. Butler for three, no good. Rebound. Oh, what a rebound by Perry. Stole away from Murphy. Oh, wow. A heroic effort right there. I thought Murphy had that one, and Perry comes away oh, with and it. Oh, Drew Cook, Drew Cook did it. Recalled him for reach. Oh, timeout, timeout. 45.7 seconds left. 28 seconds on the shot clock. Slippery Rock can run it down and give Kyle the last possession. We but gotta see this effort again here. This was amazing. I didn't even see Perry yeah. in there. I right? didn't either. I was. I thought Murphy had it. You're looking around, and and Perry stole it away there. Perry's uh, had a couple slam dunks in this game and a three point play. It's like he's one of one of the most unsung heroes for the Rock here. 45.7 seconds left. Here we go. Here, here's the mystery by Butler. Huge scrum. I thought Murphy has it right there though. Butler rips out. Great camera shot. That's a great view right there great from our camera. camera. Shot. But. Now, there's a 17.7 .7 second difference between shot and game clock. Sabrina can run it down, give Cal last possession. Yep. Whether you want to do that, I don't know. But something to note, Tabari Perry, 12 rebounds. Six of those have been offensive. Yep. That's a big stat yep. to look at if Sabrina comes away with the win. That's Especially that last one. Absolutely huge, and that one couldn't have came at a better time for the Rock. About 28 seconds on the shot clock. 45.7 seconds left. Tie ball game. Can't get any better than this. Super Rock's either going to try and score quick or gonna, they're going to take their time. We'll have to see. And here's Delinac to Butler. They'll slow things down. They will take their time. Setting the offense. 15 on the shot clock. And ball find its way to Delinac. He's had some clutch shots in the second half. Butler inside. Perry. No good! Rebound Williams! Timeout Williams! Great play! Oh my goodness! A huge exhale for the Vulcans as they avoided. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's the biggest rebound of this game. And we'll look at the replay right here. California called timeout by Chris Williams. 20.7 seconds left. Shot clock is off. This could be last possession. Yep. You see right? Perry just misses that shot. Williams, a big rebound right there, and smart enough to call right the timeout, staying away from the baseline. He could have fallen out of bounds, yep. giving Slipper Rock the ball back with no shot clock, but now California has it. We'll have to see, do they keep the same lineup out there, or do they put in the guys that they know can score, go to the basket? You have to imagine you'll see Murphy, Williams, Jackie Bick, possibly Marks, and Cook out there, your best shooters. It, it's one exciting game, yeah. Matt. It, it's I, my heart, I thought my heart could take it for the IEP game, but this is just outstanding. Outstanding basketball from these two teams. Let's see, we have Murphy, Jackie Bick, Dombrowski, Fortune, and Williams. Dombrowski can shoot. Murphy can go down low. Fortune and Jackie Bick, we know they can shoot, and Williams can always hit the big three when needed. And here's Fortune. Under 20 seconds, no shot clock. Slippery Rock, they could foul, but it would not be smart because if they foul, it's a double bonus. And you never know if they'll actually make a shot. Murphy to Jackie Beck. Eight seconds. Seven seconds. Jackie Beck looking for a shot. Jackie Beck, three seconds. Fires for the win! No good! Uh, overtime at the Morrow Fieldhouse! It's a hated word among our crew, but Matt, there's no better ending to this game. 40 minutes is not enough to no. decide a victor. And Jackie Beck, Jackie Beck, great defense there by the Rock. He could get a shot off. He had the force one, and it was an air ball. So we will keep it here. We will keep it here. And we're going to look at some replays from the second half and see how we got to this tie game. You see right here, Jackie Beck. A long three. I believe that was his first three of the game, if I'm correct. That's I right. Caught him on remember. the board. Yep. And then right here, Tabari player. Perry, the second slam. He has six points in this game, but four of them coming off alley oop slams. And then. Lewis Lewis Briggs, he's fouled out of this game. He cannot play anymore. A big three right there. If he didn't make that, imagine what this yeah, game could have been exactly. like. A momentum change right there. But this play might be the play that really started the momentum swing as Jackie got the football pass from Williams and put it in for an easy two. 
And then Drew Cook again. Drew Cook's a big defensive player for this team. He has seven points today, averaging about five a game, but he has so many steals. And then Armin Marks, he can always hit the big three when needed. I was Game surprised he wasn't out there uh, for the last possession. And then right there, to, or excuse me, that's, I believe, Eric Raleigh. Then Tabari Perry puts it in. I think all his points have been on slam dunks. They really have been. <laughs> there's so many replays. I'm running out of breath here talking about it. My heart is racing. <laughs> no, me right too. Now. Exciting it's, stuff. The emotion in this game is just overwhelming. As and here's the, why we're in overtime. That's why we're in overtime. That three ball, well not three ball, but a three point play from Antonio Butler is we're going to get the tip here. We'll have to see what's going to be. And Alonzo Murphy for Cal and Eric Raleigh for Slipper Rock. There's five minutes and Briggs is out. Slippery Rock, if fouls do carry over, I believe they do. They're one away from double bonus. Murphy and Raleigh. Good passion, Vulcans. So Jackie back, we'll start things off. 10 points in the second half. Big reason why this game's tied. That's Chris Williams. And there's only five minutes in overtime too. That's something to remember. Look, fouled. And he'll go to the line. And now that's 10 team fouls. So any foul after that, that's gonna go against Mate Delanek. That's his first. Any foul now will send Cal automatically to the line for two shots. That's something to remember. Cal has a foul to give. And they are very far away from double bonus too. Drew Cook. 70.7% from the line this season. Freshman from Beaver Falls. No Beaver Falls. And it's good. Clutch free throw there by Drew Cook. Beaver Falls, the home of uh, legendary quarterback Joe Namath. As Drew Cook was on that state championship team from Beaver Falls last year. Great school of Beaver Falls. And two, two ice cold shots by Drew Cook. Gives the Vulcans the lead here with 47, 45, 4, 46 remaining. A lot of fours and sevens. Playing a press right now, it's kind of surprising. They're trying to force the issue for Slipper Rock, trying to force them into bad shots. It's a good idea, but you might want a lot of players down the back end as well and try and make sure no easy layups are occurring. Delianak works inside, over to Butler, to Rin, wide open three, no good, rebound. Oh, and they're gonna call it, it would be on Murphy. Him and, and Raleigh were fighting for the ball there. That's the 16 foul. One more will send Slipperuck to the line for one and ones. We'll see here. Looks like Came across the back Murphy there, yeah. got the hook around the neck. So the Rock will get a second crack at this here. 4.23 remaining. A fresh shot clock too, so they only have 28 seconds left, but a fresh possession. Butler's directing traffic. And hands it off to Wren to Butler. Fifteen seconds on the shot clock. The ball is in the hands of Delinac. Back to Butler. Four minutes left. Four minutes exactly. Butler. Seven on the shot clock. Butler inside. And one! Butler does it again! We'll see who that foul is going to be on. I believe it might be Alonzo Murphy. And it is. That's his fourth. So one more. He's out of the game. That's going to be a big loss for the Vulcans. He's the guy they rely on to go down low in the post. Tried to go for the block, but looks like he might have just gotten across the head or the back of Butler. Both pl our player to watches are in jeopardy of fouling out of this game. How about that? <laughs> Butler. Rock leads. 354 remaining. That's 16 now for Butler. He's the leading scorer for either team. He's a big reason why the Rock, this game's still going on. As we see Chris Williams. To Jackie back. Jackie back. No good. Huge scrum. Rock ball. In California now, they can't be forcing the issue. They have to take what's given to them. 3.36 left. Even if Slipper Rock makes a basket here, they're only down by three. California has to calm down, don't panic, and rush a shot. Play exactly what he did. Here comes Butler. Like a bulldozer. No good. Rebound. Raleigh. No good. Should be yes, Cal ball. The Rock didn't like it, but it was clear. I feel Raleigh got it, and their discussion is still cow ball. Oh, oh, and they changed it. See the replay here? I don't know. I thought Raleigh was. We'll see here. Actually looks yeah, like it might have gone off a right. cow hand right there, so that's all, a good replay right there from our camera yeah, three. absolutely. Great work, all game. Great work all game by our crew here in this overtime. And there's only 24 seconds on the shot clock, too, 325 left. Butler to Rind. 
Out to Dalianak. As Dalianak work inside, gives it to Butler. Butler to Rin. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Butler trying to work around Drew Cook. Butler, it's on Murphy. And one. Are you kidding me? And is that on Murphy? I believe that is on Murphy. That's his fifth. How many, how many and ones has Butler produced here? It's like, and this, this place is alive. It is alive. That is on Murphy. So, so both our player watches are out of the game. And Slip Rock could easily take a four point lead here, but California cannot panic. They just need two, a big defensive stand, come back with another two. 3.04 left, that's a lot of time in Absolutely. overtime. It can go fast, but you just have to slow down your pace and keep going with what you've been doing. You got to overtime for yep. a reason. You can keep with that system. How huge is Butler? Butler's been, if Rock, the Rock wins this game, Butler's the player of the game, no questions asked. And pure. Four point lead for the Rock, three minutes remaining. Jackie back to Cook. Cook works inside, plows over, and he'll call a blocking foul on Delianak. And that's Delianak's second team foul number 11. That doesn't really matter anymore at this yep. point. Now we, we also have to mention Kenny Smith in for Alonzo Murphy. We're about to get Armin Marks in the game as well. Be interesting to see. Both big mans are out of this game now. Kenny, be interesting to see now that matchup turns to Kenny Smith versus Eric Raleigh. Got Perry underneath as well. Drew Cook hit two clutch free throws. The only points the Vulcans have had so far in this overtime period. Cal like no longer has the size to match up with anybody for Slipper Rock. That might be a deciding factor mm -hmm. as we're getting a uh, floor wipe up right now. But Kenny Smith, he's only six foot five. Williams six foot five. Dombrowski six six. Chica Obi's the next tallest player. He's six seven, but he's hurt not playing. California's going to have to play bigger than what they really are at this point in the game. So Drew Cook to slice into the rock lead. No good. A devastating miss. And now you start to look back at those free throws. Cal yep. missed. And our last stat sheet, they missed eight free throws. Make it that could have given them the game in uh, regulation. Cook. Whoa! Interesting rim there, but nonetheless, he gets it to go. Three point game. 2.53 remaining. It seemed like I was there for a while. Yeah, I think the rim's trying to play some tricks on Drew Cook right there. He missed the first, trying to make him work for the second. Luckily enough, got that one to fall in. The Rock also had a lead in overtime on Wednesday, and they let that slip away. So it'd be interesting to see, can, the, can they hold on? Or could it be a third, a possible third straight loss? Here's Delianak, he wants to swat it away by Williams! And Chris Williams with the stare down on Delanac afterwards. That was a big block. No foul called. Nine seconds on the shot clock. We'll see right here. Camera three. Perfect angle. Slam. Going in for liftoff was Delanac, but Chris Williams said, this is where I took liftoff. You can't. Well, there's Rind. He gets it to go. That's a big shot. That's the first two points yeah. for Rind all game. And it could come at a bigger time for the Rock. Here comes Jackie back. Vulcan's got to get something going. Five points, here's Jackie back. To Williams, to Cook, and here's Kenny Smith. Smith, inside of Raleigh, Smith draws, oh and a travel, and a travel. Oh my goodness, this could be a devastation for the Vulcans. That might be the turning point with 2.02 left. We're gonna see right here, Smith, and he hopped, he hopped. That's two steps and then one more. That is the travel right there. So a good call by the referees, but now it's, you know, the Vulcans. I, so the re discussion by the refs here, but getting back to what I was about to say, the Vulcans, they've held, they've held serve with the Rock all game, but eventually, the, I think the Rock played for overtime. They wanted to get in the overtime because the Vulcans are almost out of breath. They really have worn down the Vulcans. It'll be a double technical. And I believe Kenny Smith will be the recipient of the Vulcan technical. We're still trying to figure out who was the technical recipient for the Rock. I believe it might have been Delianak. As we see. 
They'll count as personal fouls since they, I mean, pretty much offset, so there'll be no shootings. We have 150 remaining here. Five point lead for the Rock. California now has 19 fouls. Next one sent Sibarak to the double bonus. Oh, so goodness. Bryn got slammed on the floor. Good to see how he fell down there, but boy, that didn't sound good. It looks like Chris Williams and Wren were intertwined and Wren went down and Chris Williams trying to plead his case that he was pushed into. Not Wren. We'll see here if we can find it. Yeah, we just see him down, down on the ground. That's going to be the 10th personal foul for Cal. That's going to send uh, Wren to the line. He's an 80% free throw shooter on the year. So definitely a guy you wanted this free throw stripe to possibly close this out here for the Rock. These might be the biggest points of the game. You're already up by five. Six or seven might be insurmountable with only a minute 40 left. Key stat here, Slippery Rock, eight for 10 from the line, nine for 11 from the line. And there, there is your difference right there. There's your difference. Even if California made five of those free throws in regulation, they would still have won this game in regulation. Free throws are the most important part of the game. and You overlook it so much as a team. And now... Vulcans with 140 remaining here. It's down now suddenly down seven. Find themselves in desperation mode. But with the defense that the Vulcans have, they can get some steals and turnovers. You never know. Absolutely. It's Jackie back. Let it roll. Gives it to Fortune. Vulcans got to strike quick. Fortune. To Jackie back. Over to Marks. 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 To Fortune. Fortune. Back to Marks. Marks for three. No good. Rebound Williams. Williams loses the ball. And a huge foul and a tie up. And the Rock will go to the line. And with 116 remaining, the Vulcans' hopes of an upset is growing dim by the minute. And now we're starting to hear the cheering section for Slipper Rock get loud as they realize that this game might start to be put on ice. Foul going to go on Kenny Smith. That's his second. And Slipper Rock going to play no one on the line here. Well, actually, they're going to play one guy on the line. They might add another one after the second free throw with Tabari Perry. Tabari Perry, he's got six points today. All by the way, the slam dunk. And got it to go. Lucky bounce there for the Rock. As we've seen, both rims, both rims playing tricks with the players there. In a minute 16 left, there's still a heartbeat for California, but they're going to have to hit a big shot their next opportunity. And Perry. And both. Make that 11 for 13 from the free first strike for the Rock. Impressive. And Fortune. Ball can see the strike quick. Fortune. On Perry. Fortune gets inside the Marks. Marks loses the ball. Another turnover. And a foul. And the Rock, with a minute remaining, are on set to close this game out. And that's what home field advantage does for you as well. Your cheering section might have affected the free throws. You're up by nine right now, and people are going to look at this and say, wow, they got to overtime, but you won by maybe double digits at this point. What happened in overtime to make that happen? Slippery Rock didn't miss their free throws. Exactly. They got the cheering section into it. Their defense really stood up. I mean, I've been watching this. There's just like one guy with a flag down here running around the court. I mean, I'm ready to go on. The, I'm ready to expect him to run out midcourt, but nonetheless, um, Eric Raleigh missed his first free throw. For Raleigh, the sophomore from Constitution High School in Philadelphia, Constitution won the 2011 PIAA Single A Championship over uh, a local school from my area, Reading Central Catholic. And it's now a 10 point lead now. Falcons need to strike quick. Tynell Fortune hits its side and gets it to go. So it's now an eight point lead, lead now for the Rock, 53.5 seconds, timeout California. And at this point, you just have to keep fouling because there's nothing you can really do to offset because if you let them run the clock down it's going to be 18 seconds that's not enough time to score eight points you just have to keep fouling and you need hope to, to goodness someone misses you need to get opportunistic you need to do, you really i wouldn't say play you can't get laid a guy wide open out of the court and put it away but you need, it's times the issue now it's eight point lead it's been extended both teams have and we're going to take some look at the replays here, Zach, from overtime. And it started off with Butler here with, like, he's got, like, 20 and ones this game. Yeah, I've seen at least three of them. He has eight or 19 points in the game total. He's definitely been the player to go to for the Rock. 
especially when Lewis Briggs was fouled out. And then Tynell Fortune as well. Like he's been a big aspect of this game. He hit one three-pointer and gave Cal the lead. But when you look back at this game, California, even though they might lose, this might be their best game they played all year, knowing that we went on the road to Slippery Rock, one of the best teams in the PSAC, up there with Bloomsburg and Shippensburg and IEP and Gannon and Mercyhurst and yada, yada, yada. You were down by 14 and came back and went to overtime. And although right now you've only scored five points, that's still an effort that you may not get the W today, but you keep that effort going if you make the playoffs. You might steal some victories away from teams like Slippery Rock or Gannon or IUP again or Mercyhurst, teams you'll have to go on the road to. One of the hardest things to do in sports is beat a team three times in a season. And I think we mentioned that with, with the Gannon, the Cal women against Gannon. We'll see uh, Rin take a timeout here. Um, Gannon has beaten Cal twice. Um, this season and now if Cal, I'll tell you what, if Cal, both of you and I were talking about this, if Cal gets them in the playoffs, Cal is, I really like Cal's chances actually, even if it's at the Hammer Mill Center. It's the the fact that the first time you see a team, it's a little hard, second time you might make a few adjustments, second time though, you know what this team can do, as now, we're, take a look. we're going to look in a moment. We're waiting for our graphic to pop up First of all, let's take a look at this nice court here. There we go, nice bro upcoming broadcast here. Big game against Mercyhurst on Wednesday. Yeah, big game against Mercyhurst. You need that win to keep in the playoff hunt. Then at Edinburgh, you can never overlook an Edinburgh team at home. Especially the up. IUP coming to the Convocation Center looking for revenge. And then at Clarion in the Tippin Gymnasium, you can never overlook them, especially Slippery after Rock found that Slippery out well, Rock. yep. And we're gonna take a look at the standings here. IUP playing Clarion tonight at the KCAC. Mercyhurst right on their tail. They're tied with them. IEP with the tiebreaker. And then under that, look out. Look from three to seven. I mean, even Clarion. Clarion's working their way back in here. Like, yeah, Clarion is still alive by all <laughs> means here. They only have four wins on the year, but they could sneak into the playoffs if things can roll their way and they can beat some top teams. And they get Cal and Pitt Johnstown. So they they, they basically, they're control, they control their destiny. I never they, thought I'd say that. Yeah, and California, never an easy opponent, but... You've already played Gannon twice, Slippery Rock twice. That's two of the tougher teams in the PSAC. You know that you can eliminate them off your schedule. You may not be able to come away with the sweep of the second half with those teams, but you know at least those teams won't be there down the road to haunt you. Slippery Rock will inbounds. Rin tried to throw it off there, gets inside the Butler. Williams trying to foul, and he will foul him. That will be Williams' fourth. And Antonio Butler, I'll tell you what, he was almost out of bounds on that one. That's right, yeah, he was His very toe close. was very close to going out of bounds. That would have been a big oh. turnover. I believe Williams is going to get the foul. That's his fourth. One more, he fouls out. But Butler coming into this one, 58.2% from the line. Our last stat update, we'll have to see here, three of three. So definitely playing above his free throw percentages. I think, and you say 11 for 13. No good. And of course, as I say that, he misses <laughs> one, but the old announcer's yeah. jinx. Yeah. Nonetheless, I mean, Butler's put the team on his back since Briggs fou fouled out. And for redemption, he got it. And that's, Nine points. That's 20 now for Butler. He's the only player in, in 20 for either team. It's Mark 6 Mark's and 3. Mark 3, no good. Rebound by Rin. That should do it. And I believe it'll be called another foul will be on Jackie Beck. So that's Jackie Beck's fourth. He's one more. He's out of the game. So once the and the overtime doing taking a toll on the Vulcans. Um, as we Ren will go to the line here. Eighty percent. He hit us both the last time up. Sophomore from Oil City. Just up I seventy nine here. And he hits the first one. And Max Rin, he didn't have any points coming this overtime. He's been huge. Yeah, he's five points in overtime. And, you know, sometimes the guys that get completely shut down, like Jackie Bick, yep. he had 10 in the second half. That was no good. Rebound marks. 10 points, 40 seconds. Fortune. Fires it over to wide open Chris Williams for three. No good. Rebound Perry. Foul marks. At this point, California, they're still fouling because they know, even if it's at 12, you throw up a prayer three for three or four times, you can 
tie it. Yep. It's very unlikely, of I mean, course. But crazier things have happened. <laughs> crazier things have happened. Reggie Miller yeah. scored seven points yeah. in a matter of oh. how many seconds. They made Anything ESPN 30 for 30 about it. And, um, definitely, definitely crazy things have happened. And college basketball can't get any better than that. A lot of crazy games in March. I think there was there was one from last March where it was like, I, I forget who the team teams were, but they were down like five and they complete. I think Davidson, Davidson, whoever they lost. I think it was it was Davidson Marquette. As as I get off topic here, Tabari Perry hit his first free throw. Davidson had like a six point lead with 30 seconds against Marquette. And Marquette won the game in regulation. Yeah, anything can happen in basketball. It's a game of pace and skill. As Perry makes his second, that makes him up to 10 points in the game. Now Chris Williams works inside, no good. And the shot clock is turned off. Perry racing down court, loses the ball. Big scrum, and it'll be eventually be a foul. That's, yeah, that might send Chris Williams out for the game. And that will, that yeah. it will be his fifth. Yeah, that. And Chris Williams, though, you cannot overlook the effort he gave on rebounds, free throw, yeah. being the senior leader on his team, telling his team to calm down. He could be the guy that led his team to come back and get into overtime. And you know, you know it's just effort here is we'll see an Avery Allman sighting. An Avery Allman sighting about to come out in the game. Avery Allman got a big basket against Gannon on Wednesdays. He gets more extended playing time as the, the Cal Ross with Chiba Oki hurt. Vulcan's only dressed nine guys for the past couple games. Yeah, and I think that's kind of helped them actually because having nine guys you're going to have to start relying on the team and build a little bit more chemistry. I think that's what's led them to a few upset wins over the past couple of weeks as Perry makes the first. You're having a guy out there at all times possibly because yeah. you have to. Right. And you sometimes it's Williams or Jakubic or Murphy. And having a guy out there that can lead the team, whether it be the first or second unit, is big for the Vulcans, and it might help them sneak into the playoffs and maybe upset a couple teams when it comes to March. Tynell Fortune, go inside, and one. Nice effort there by Tynell Fortune. Fortune's really getting it to go recently. He has 11 points now in the game, trying to make it 12. He's the leading scorer for the Vulcans. And although he's the leading scorer for the Vulcans at only 11 points, it was a balanced attack from a lot of guys. Jackie Bick Cook had 10. Jackie Bick had 10. Fortune with 11. Marks with 5. Fortune now has 12, actually. So Murphy with eight and Williams with six. Fortune had 20 against the Rock in November as the ball fittingly be in the hands of the guy who won the game for the Rock pretty much, Kenny Butler. As time will run out, but an upset bid. Falls short here at the Morrow Fieldhouse. A great effort not to be denied as the Rock defeat the Vulcans 64-53 in overtime. And Zach, final thoughts on this great game? Absolutely great game, Matt. And that, that will do it. For Zach Lamar, my name's Matt Hagee. We thank you for joining us. Final score, Slippery Rock 64, Cal U 53 in overtime. Make sure to join us Wednesday against Mercyhurst at the Convocation Center. Good night, everybody.